Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of what if Naruto seriously trained under Drea if you enjoy the video then like share and subscribe and also comment your thoughts as it inspires me to make more such videos and remember to check out my playlist section for other interesting stories. So let's get started. Chapter 6 Elemental Training Naruto and Drea were walking on a plain field as the sun was just about to set. The first year was already at its end and Naruto managed to finish his genjutsu training to at least acceptable levels. Clearly, he wasn't cut out for the art of illusions, but at least he would be able to escape from almost any technique that someone casted on him. After the genjutsu part, Naruto focused his entire team on physical exercises in order to build some muscles and stamina. Both his muscles and height grew and now Naruto was almost reaching Drea's neck. The pervert was surprised by Naruto's sudden growth, but then he suspected it had something to do with not eating so much ramen all the time, instead eating healthy food. Another part of Naruto's training revolved towards learning the katas of Saratobi's clan style. Naruto received a present from Drea, a unique staff made with heavy metal for bigger impact. The weapon was black with silver at each end. At first, Naruto appeared to be swinging the weapon like a drunk civilian, but with practice, Drea could very well see that Naruto managed to use the weapon as if it was an extension of his body. The style consisted of using the staff together with body movements that would improve the weapon's speed and more deadly and Naruto was well in his way to learn one of the Sandime Hokage's many legacies. Also, the staff was special since Naruto could use chakra to diminish its size and keep it like a sword strapped on his back. Because of this, he could very well surprise the enemy by using chakra to elongate the weapon. Right now, the pervert was massaging his bruised left cheek and Naruto could only sigh in dismay seeing that his sensei would never learn his lesson. Every time they would walk inside a village, they had to leave not because of danger that Akatsuki would find them, but rather escaping from the women's wrath after spotting the pervert peeping on them. Oi Naruto, let's settle for today, it's already night, and it's not wise to travel in the dark, said Drea burning a snort from Naruto, who knew that he just wanted to stop to put some ice on the wound so that it would stop hurting. Okay, Aero sensei but at least admit that your abilities in peeping greatly diminished these days. Almost every village we've been to you were discovered and we had to run away, laughed Naruto, before receiving a punch in the head from Drea. Oh, what was that for, Aero sensei Asked Naruto, though he was smiling inside from being able to irritate his teacher. That's for making fun of the abilities of the almighty Gama Senin brat. Now, let's fix up the tent and gather some wood said Drea, before smiling upon seeing Naruto mumbling some curse words to the Senin, while looking for some wood to ignite a fireplace. After everything was set, Drea used a small katan jutsu and lit up the fire. Aero sensei, how long before we meet that friend of yours, what is his name again? asked Naruto as he was lying down on the ground while looking at the stars. It somehow eased Naruto to look at the sky at night. He would be lost in trying to look at the constellations that Drea once taught him, but it was relaxing nonetheless. Drea smiled at his prodigy pupil. In the beginning of this journey, Drea sometimes confused Naruto with Namikaze Minato, simply because of the drive both had towards training and improving their abilities. However, with time, Drea managed to separate their personalities simply because Naruto was more of a prankster than Minato, often playing jokes with the Sanin, a trait that Naruto's mother had. His name is Makoto Sujairo, and he lives in a village close to the desert that separates fire country from wind country. In actuality, he is now a retired shinobi, but the man was responsible for great deeds for Suna in his prime. Some say that his Fuden skills rivaled none, and even say that he could have become Keisuke if he's so pleased. He'll be more than adequate to teach you the art of wind ninjutsu, explained Drea, earning a nod from Naruto as he flipped a dango stick in his mouth. I wonder though, if I will be able to use the element effectively. I've read a book that said that Fuden ninjutsu was hard to learn and even harder to master in order to be used in battle effectively. Wondered Naruto, but Drea only smiled before explaining to Naruto. Indeed, Wind users were rare in this world because of those reasons. However, for those who manages to learn the element that information alone sends an opponent on edge. Wind is the most feared element in all the elemental nations in Naruto. It serves both as close and middle range, and anyone who dares to face a wind user will most certainly lose. The only weakness, though, is long-ranged, 
but you don't have to worry about it. Long-range users are easy to beat once you know the most important thing, explained Drea, before Naruto turned his attention to Drea. Those who can only attack from a distance are rendered useless when the opponent learns how to get closer, meaning that once you eliminate the distance between you and a long-range fighter, he's done for and have to adapt his fighting skills, said Drea, earning a nod in acceptance from Naruto. As times passed student and sensei continued to talk about the difference between close and long-range fighting, and how to use the opponent's strength against him. It didn't take long for them to say goodnight to each other as Naruto stayed on guard until Drea would relieve him in four hours. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. After erasing all evidence of their presence, Drea and Naruto moved towards the place where they would be for at least a couple of months. Naruto didn't know, but Drea did already converse with Sujairo regarding the blonde's training in Futen Ninjutsu. Sujairo showed interest in training the boy at the time, since he knew from Drea that the boy was strong-willed enough to learn everything about wind and jutsu. After a couple hours walking the desert appeared in the horizon, meaning that the two were near from their destination. However, Naruto was confused upon seeing that Drea stopped and was looking for something. Aero sensei what are you doing? Asked Naruto, but Drea offered no response, instead just smiled before beginning an intricate set of seals. The seal sequence took longer than Naruto thought and suddenly Drea slammed his hands on the ground with force. The result stunned Naruto as the image shifted from a playing field to a two-story house with a considerable garden. After seeing it, Naruto did the only thing he could at the moment. He let his chin fell and the mouth open at the possibility of such a thing. Making a house disappear using chakra was something out of this world, Naruto thought. Drea for his part laughed hard at Naruto's fish face and explained about the art of seals and its uses. He stopped short, though, when he heard a voice echoing in the shadows. It's been a long time Drea-san, I've received your messenger hawk said the voice, but Naruto couldn't find the person's location since the voice was simply all around. Suddenly an old, but imposing figure appeared holding a simple wooden staff. Gray hair just like Drea, but short Sujairo was just as big as the San and Naruto wondered. It's good to see you too Sujairo-san, I see that time has been kind to you my friend smiled Drea, earning a snort from Sujairo. It was common fact at least for Drea, that just like Orochimaru, Sujairo didn't appreciate the consequences of getting old. I wouldn't go to the same trouble as Orochimaru to cheat death, but I can't help but agree with him that getting old is such a drag said Sujairo, earning laughter from Drea. While the elders were talking and remembering the good old days, Naruto was left standing next to Drea as he sees the man upside down. Normally, the blonde would conclude by saying that he didn't look like much, but that would be his old self thinking. Naruto had enough experience as a shinobi now to never interpret what it looks like instead of seeing the underneath the underneath. It actually took a little while for them to stop the conversation. But instead of greeting Naruto, Sujairo just turned his back to them and signaled them to follow him. After a couple of steps, Sujairo turned and began a sequence of hand seals which Naruto wondered about the similarity with Drea's sequence from before. Afterwards, he slammed both hands on the ground and the landscape suddenly shifted, until Naruto couldn't see either the desert or the path behind. Drea looked at his student with a smile on his face. Sujairo happens to be extremely cautious even after retirement, it seems. With Fuinjutsu, he can hide his house so that no one can see where it is. Also, as you can see this house doesn't belong to the usual terrain, meaning we just jumped to another dimension where the house is located explained Drea, before waiting to see Naruto screaming like crazy at the implications of what was said. Where it? How the hell are we in another dimension? Shouted Naruto before Sujairo began to speak on Drea's behalf. Drea-san said you're loud, but I thought he was joking. Well, to answer your question, it would require explaining quite a lot of theory regarding Fuinjutsu and with the amount of experience you have now, it would be impossible for me to explain it to you, and also impossible for you to fully understand. The reason why I brought you here is twofold. First, you have powerful enemies that are tracking you as we speak and second, it will benefit your training in Futen Ninjutsu. Now, come inside, and we'll get to talk about how we will spend the next four months, said Sujairo as he turned once again to the house, and stepped forward with Naruto and Drea close behind. Once inside, all three of them went to a room that had a huge library of scrolls, 
and a table in the middle for studies. Sujairo took one of the chairs and ushered his guests to do the same as he grabbed a strange object. To Naruto, it looked like simple disc shape made of glass, but for the most experienced, this was a special piece of glass. Naruto, I happen to know from Drea that you possess a wind affinity. However, while it's rare in your country, it isn't in wind country. As a matter of speaking, our studies with wind jutsus have been carried out since the Shodan Keisuke's era many years ago. I'll be explaining everything I know about the art, but first we need to know how strong is your affinity towards wind jutsus said Sujairo, this time earning looks of surprise by Drea not only Naruto. Sujairo was expecting this, so he smiled and proceeded to explain. This object, as you know Drea, is what Suna uses to find their ninja's affinities. However, for those who possesses affinity for wind, we also have a specific object that indicated how strong is said affinity, explained Sujairo, earning a nod from Drea and Naruto, before the man continued to explain. The method is quite simple, Naruto only needs to focus chakra on the disc, and it will be cut multiple times. The key to knowing how strong is his affinity is the numbers of cuts on the disc. Try Naruto, let's see how strong is your affinity, said Sujairo as he handed the disc to Naruto. Naruto, then extended his hand and placed the disc on top of it, before he began to focus his chakra. Quickly, Naruto focused the necessary chakra, and was surprised to see that the disc was being sliced many times. 5. 15. 20. 25 cuts total. Naruto was confused, since he didn't know if that was good or bad. Also, the look of surprise that Sujairo expressed on his face didn't tell much. Naruto could possess the strongest affinity yet, or the worst. The man though, cleared his throat and looked at Naruto while smiling. That's an odd number for someone with your experience. Most Jounin and Suna could only cut 15 times and they were already trained in the art. Dre, are you sure he's from Konoha? Asked Sujairo, before seeing a nod from the pervert before he continued. Well, then it seems you'll be able to grasp pretty much everything that is to be taught regarding food and ninjutsu. Now, your training will begin tomorrow, since I have yet to prepare the material necessary. So, I'll be showing you to your respective rooms and prepare some dinner for us said Sujairo before rising from his chair and leaving the room followed closely by Naruto and Drea. After Sujairo guided Naruto to his room he went with Drea to his room, but not without taking the opportunity to talk to the pervert. Drea knew that Naruto's numbers were above average, and he also knew that Sujairo was beyond impressed. The man was smart, Drea knew. Now that Naruto is not here, I'd like to express my surprise concerning the results, said Sujairo, earning a nod from Drea who smiled as he was listening to his friend. While I said that Jounin are only able to cut 15 times I didn't say that he surpassed the Nadain Keisuke, who until now detained the record for most cuts. Who is he Drea? How is this possible? Asked Sujairo, but Drea was too stunned to even answer. Naruto having more potential than a cage level ninja was surprising enough, but surpassing the Nadame Keisuke, who was known as Sona's Case Tenchu, when God was beyond anything he ever thought possible. I'm just as stunned as you are actually. Naruto indeed held great promise in the future, but I never thought he could surpass a cage in elemental manipulation, at least not for a good 10 years. And thinking about it, this number can increase after he masters the element, am I right? Asked Drea, earning a nod from Sujairo, who couldn't help but smile upon finding such a prodigy to pass his teachings to. I want to know more about him, Drea. Tell me all his abilities so far and his accomplishments said Sujairo, earning a nod from Drea, who then invited Sujairo for a cup of tea for their upcoming conversation. After Sujairo made up some tea, Drea began to tell everything about Naruto. He told about the boy's skills up to now involving, of course, his uncanny ability to learn things faster with the cage bunshin technique. He told about Naruto's first C-ranked mission where he along with his team faced an A-ranked missing nin from mist to which Sujairo was surprised to hear that was that time that Naruto learned the true power of the Kyubi no Yoko. He also came to hear about the time of the Suna sound invasion, that Naruto managed to save Konoha by beating Shukaku the one-tailed Jinchuriki. That was the only time I thanked the heavens that I was already retired, unless I would be dragged to this mess. At the time Orochimaru lured Suna to attack Konoha taking advantage that the wind daimyu was choosing Konoha for his missions. So, 
Naruto managed to beat the Yandime Keisuke's son while possessed by Shikaku. What else? Smiled Sujairo since he envisioned the next four months and the times Naruto will surpass every expectation set before him. There are many more accomplishments to tell you about. His team was responsible for freeing Snow Country and Takagakure from being taken by missing nins once. I assure you Sujairo, the brat will surprise you a lot. He may not get it right away, but after practice, he will learn it faster than anybody else. The people in Konoha has much faith in his abilities in the future to come said Drea to which Sujairo nodded, before saying that he now needed to prepare Naruto's training for the upcoming four months. Drea nodded and went back to his room to take a quick nap. Due to escaping from Akatsuki's clutches, Drea and Naruto weren't able to stay much time resting, being on constant move. Now that they would be safe for the upcoming four months, he could finally rest. Later when dinner was ready, Naruto and Sujairo began to talk about some light subjects. Naruto learned that Sujairo wasn't very fond of talking shinobi while eating so he kept the million questions he had in his mind to himself at least until tomorrow. Naruto confessed to both Drea and Sujairo that he never thought about having a hobby, since all he did during his life was to train and eat ramen however Naruto couldn't help but be amazed at some different subjects that Drea and Sujairo were discussing about. Their subjects began from a few jokes about the past to intellectual discussions about both the fire and wind Damie's lives, and their respective decisions concerning specific toppings. Eventually, the conversation was over and all of them went to their respective rooms to sleep. Naruto, though, could admit that he didn't understand half the words that were being discussed. Nevertheless, he felt it kind of relieved of getting to relax from the ninja training, and it was a weird sensation for the blonde. Thinking about other subjects apart from shinobi related was a strange concept for Naruto, and suddenly the word Hokage appeared in his mind. As he turned on the water for a quick shower, Naruto was trying to associate the daimyu figure of a big country like Konoha with the Hokage. Certainly, one being the ruler of the country, and the other being the ruler of a hidden village. However if the daimyu rules the whole country then the daimyu rules Konoha as well. All these thoughts were in Naruto's head at the moment, and he couldn't figure the answer to this questions. Getting out of the shower, he got in some light sleeping clothes, not that horrible pajamas that he wore in the series, and went to a very comfortable bed. Introduction to politics was something the Ninja Academy actually covered, but Naruto never really paid much attention to the subject even if the teacher, at the time, wouldn't explain it in terms he could understand for Naruto everything not connected to the shinobi way of life didn't pick his interest much. However, now the doubt about who has more authority in Konoha did plague his mind a bit. Naruto knew that Konoha provided services for fire country since the fire daimyu would request a vast majority of missions to be held by the village. But, could the Hokage say no to the daimyu without consequences? The blonde was getting impatient with not knowing the answers to these questions so he instead closed his eyes and tried not to think about it so much. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. Rising up early, Naruto was already at the kitchen making some breakfast when Drea showed up yawning from the nice sleep he had in ages. It seems you're eager to begin training as always Naruto smiled Drea, earning a nod from Naruto who settled a glass of orange juice to the pervert who in turn accepted eagerly. Aero sensei I was remembering your discussion with Sujairo-sensei yesterday about politics, and I was wondering about something said Naruto, earning Drea's attention. At first, Drea thought he was still sleeping as he blinked a couple of times in front of the blonde. It wasn't just because of the subject, it was just because Naruto expressed interest in something else besides training as a shinobi. He issued Naruto to come forward with his doubt. Well, I was thinking about the daimyu and the Hokage position. I know that the Hokage is the ruler of the hidden village, but since the village is located within fire territory then the Hokage answers to the daimyu correct? Asked Naruto to which Drea nodded before the blonde continued. My question is can the Hokage choose to not to respond or would have to abide by the daimyu's wishes? Asked Naruto before seeing Drea smile. You're correct. Indeed, the Hokage must answer to the daimyu however the daimyu has no saying in how the Hokage rules Konoha. Although, this doesn't mean that the Hokage is completely independent from the daimyu. You don't know this, but the daimyu has access to all of Kanaha's legal documentation and shinobi records. Also, 
There are certain decisions that a Hokage alone can't choose, like the cage position itself. When a Hokage steps down, it's up to the daimyo to choose a worthy candidate for the position, who then, will be submitted to the village's Jounin council for the final decision. Explained Rea, before seeing Naruto crack his brain for a while, before smiling and understanding. I didn't know you'd be interested in politics, Naruto said Drea. Well, it's not that it perked my interest, it was just a doubt of my own. I think all this information was covered at the academy, I just didn't pay attention that much, thanks for explaining it to me Aero sensei smiled Naruto, earning a nod from Drea, before he heard footsteps coming down the stairs. Ah, I see you two are already up. Good, I actually thought I would have to wake you all up using some methods of my own. But that won't be necessary, now Naruto, after we finish breakfast, I'll explain to you our schedule for your training. During your stay here, you'll learn everything there is to know about wind manipulation, and when I say everything, I mean it just that. I have with me over 50 years of study in the art, gathered in one major scroll which will be your friend for the duration of your stay here. This will involve not only practical exercises, but mental as well, since learning to control the wind requires knowledge and above all, Patience said Sujiro before grabbing a glass to fill it with orange juice as well as some cereal in the fridge. Naruto for his part managed to see how enthusiastic Sujiro was and couldn't help but smile in retrospect to what the man said about his training. Once Sujiro finished his breakfast he got up and ushered both Naruto and Drea to follow him outside when they would be commence. They walked for a while until Sujiro stopped and turned to set his gaze on his new student. Now, this will be your training ground for the duration of your training said Sujiro as he motioned the youngster to look around a bit. The scenario was interesting Naruto wondered. Lots and lots of trees filled the area, but somehow it was different than an actual forest and a small lake with a waterfall to his left. Naruto couldn't help but marvel at the beautiful scenery set before him. The water falling in contrast with the sunlight was an astonishing sight to behold. After some time wandering his eyes around Naruto smiled and fixed eye contact with his new sensei. You have a nice home Sujiro sensei, I could just stare at the waterfall for months on end smiled Naruto, earning a nod from Sujiro, followed by a smile as he turned to understand what Naruto sees in it. I suppose so, I've been living here for 15 years now, but it's a sight to behold indeed. Now, I'll explain you what we'll be doing, and as I said before I'll teach you everything I know. As you know or do not know, Fuuden ninjutsu is to me, the deadliest element in ninjutsu. Although it's chakra consuming, a wind user is feared throughout the elemental nations, simply because you can use it in close, mid, and long range fighting. No affinity covers as much as wind. Now, Fuuden divides itself in three subcategories, and you'll learn them all. First one of them, is the wind itself. By using chakra, you can focus on increasing the power of the wind. Assemble hurricanes, and even creating strong gusts of wind capable of tearing out trees from the ground, with a simple blow. The second one is the wind slice ability, this type of power is most used with swords as it elongates the metal, and also strength them to fight. Last, but not least, is air pressure control. The last one is the most advanced form of wind manipulation, and sadly to say, I can't teach you much further than the very basic. Up to now, only one jutsu was created by air pressure manipulation explained Sujiro before was interrupted by Naruto. Sujiro sensei, may I ask why the third type is frowned upon? I believe it would be an advantage to control such element asked Naruto, while crossing his arms, but this time Drea took the liberty to explain. Air pressure manipulation requires too much chakra and too much concentration to be used properly, and in the midst of battle the enemy wouldn't wait for you to do that. There were those who lost their lives in battle because of using a skill they weren't familiarized with. As I understand, you'll be learning the first and second abilities of Futen Ninjutsu and leave the third one for last said Drea, looking at Sujiro for confirmation. Indeed, he will. First, though, is imperative that you learn how to use Futen Chakra and then will progress to a most advanced study of the art physical training will be held in daylight and when the sun goes out you will head back to read some material about Futen Ninjutsu and its many uses any questions? Asked Sujiro, earning a nod from Naruto. Yes, ah. Uh. I know that Futen is an offensive affinity, but can we use wind for defensive purposes? Asked Naruto to which Sujiro smiled. 
Just like every affinity, Wooten have both offensive and defensive capabilities. Of course, wind is more suited for offense, but it's also used to defend. I happen to know some techniques that serve for protection. Speaking of techniques, they'll serve as objectives to this training. They are 10 techniques I'll teach you during these four months. Of course, they are plenty other techniques, but I choose these for you to learn each one of the wind's capabilities. I'll reveal them as you progress in your training. Your schedule will be divided in four. The first month will be to teach you how to use Futen Chakra how it's supposed to be. The next three months will be to teach you the three capabilities of Futen that we discussed before. How is that? Asked Sujairo with a smile on his face as he could almost feel Naruto's excitement. Now, Dre here told me about how you use the clone technique to practice faster. So we'll take advantage of it and learn the first aspects of food and manipulation. You see that tree over there pointed Sujairo, before seeing Naruto turn to meet the tree that his sensei was pointing. Sujairo grabbed a lowly leaf from the ground and ushered Naruto to look as he explained. One of the many aspects of Futen ninjutsu is to slice objects using only chakra said Sujairo as he focused some chakra in his hand and showed the leaf being sliced in two before Naruto's very eye. You are to use as many cage bunshin and each practice this. At the end of the day, I want to see all these leaves sliced in two ordered Sujairo before seeing the blonde make the hand signal for the technique. Instantly, a large group of Naruto's appeared before Drea and Sujairo, before each grabbing a leaf to practice thus leaving the tree without a single leaf. Sujairo was astonished by the number, but when he looked at Drea and saw that the perverted wasn't showing any signs of being surprised Sujairo just waved it off, and watched the clones attempting to slice the leaf. So, how long do you think he'll take? Asked Sujairo, before he heard a small snort from Drea. Hard to say really? This technique of his reduces time to large amounts. He won't need the whole day though, that I can assure you said Drea, though in his mind he had a conviction that Naruto would need close to an hour or two until one of the leaves is sliced. Throughout the training Drea would actually count how much time Naruto needed to fully grasp a technique, and even if the boy didn't focus so much in ninjutsu techniques, aside from the ones he already knew of course, Drea was positive that with this amount of clones, it wouldn't take long for the blonde to scream the technique's completion with the same enthusiasm that guy shows when he wins a challenge against Kakashi. Speaking of the blonde, there he was in the middle of his doppelgangers focusing on slicing the leaf in two, however to no avail. Nevertheless, Naruto focused on the prime objective that was leaving this place with a considerable concept of what it means to be a true master of his affinity. The blonde understood the concept behind the cage bunshin method of training so he knew that the training that he will be subjected to under Sujairo would, in normal circumstances, take years to accomplish. However, now was not the time to think of what didn't happen yet. He knew that eventually he will have to focus in other subjects, but right now his objective was for every one of his clones slice the leaf in two, which meant that by the time they are done, the real Naruto will accumulate all their experience with this exercise. Two hours passed, and the Naruto's kept on going non-stop with the intention of completing the exercise. Sujairo questioned Drea about the boy's chakra capacity and wondered how could he sustain the bunchins, and work on the technique as well. The response, although unexpected, didn't surprise Naruto's new sensei. Sujairo already knew that with Naruto, a lot of surprises would come and that he shouldn't wonder the reason behind it anymore. So when Drea said that Naruto already had more chakra than a high elite Jounin Sujairo whistled, but otherwise didn't show any surprise to Drea. However, all those thoughts of not being surprised any longer with the blonde disappeared when he heard the distinguished sound of leaves being sliced and turned to the clones. The sounds of leaves being cut was like a weapon shooting bullets repeatedly without needing to reload. Well, I guess I was right. He didn't need the whole day you might as well introduce him to the next step of the training before the sun goes down advised Drea, still finding amused to see Sujiro's stunned face upon seeing Naruto finishing the exercise in close to two hours. He has one month to train on the fundaments of wind manipulation Drea, also we're not in a hurry here, so I don't see a need for him to waste chakra and fail to absorb the theory later tonight explained Sujiro, before seeing Drea nod in understanding. Suddenly, the clones vanished and Naruto appeared in front of the two elders, with a clearly happy expression on his face, which in turn made Sujairo smile in return. The boy sure has stamina, I guess he could've gone longer today, but for today is alright, he'll have plenty of time to practice. 
I can see you're happy Naruto, but I wonder if you'll remain smiling once this training is over. Now, you'll finalize today's training with some physical workout. Drea said that you're practicing with the bow staff, so practice some of the katas, and then come back inside ordered Sujairo before seeing Naruto nodding with enthusiasm and remove a scroll from his holster in order to summon his new weapon. Immediately, the blonde closed his eyes in order to remember the many katas that were being drilled in his mind from practice as he was twirling the not-so-light staff with both hands. When he opened his eyes, Naruto focused his attention of imaginary opponents coming at him and began the dance. He began by thrusting it forward before grabbing at the end of the staff more maximum reach, before recovering and jumping to land a roundhouse kick at the incoming opponent who tried to attack him with a well-aimed punch to his face. Seeing two other attackers coming from the right, Naruto prepared defensive maneuvers for the imaginary swords that were constantly attacking the blonde in rapid succession. Naruto, then used the other end of the staff and managed to hit one of the attackers on the shoulder before twirling the staff once more and landing a strike on the man's chin by using the staff to balance himself in the air while he used his foot right on target. The blonde practiced a while longer, until fatigue reached him. He entered the house and went for a quick shower before feeling the sudden impulse to list some curse words to his new sensei. Right there on the table was located a pile of books and scrolls that no doubt were meant for him to read them. Even though the blonde found reason to start reading books on shinobi matters, he wasn't entirely happy upon seeing a pile of books and scrolls to read. Suddenly Sujairo appeared and smiled at the chance of getting back at him for surprising him a couple of times. Now, Naruto like I told you before at night you'll be studying the theory behind wind manipulation. Like all ninja art, beyond training fuden ninjutsu requires patience and knowledge, which is why after dinner you'll be reading these books and scrolls here. The books contain the general theory whereas the scrolls represents the jutsus you will be learning throughout your time here do you have any questions? Asked Sujairo. Actually, yes, I was thinking about the leaf training exercise. I remembered reading about two necessary exercises to initiate in wind manipulation, what is the next one? Asked Naruto, earning a nod in understanding from Sujairo. The next one will be attempted tomorrow, but I see no ill in explaining to you right now, so then you can prepare yourself for the task. You remember the waterfall outside, don't you? Asked Sujairo, before Naruto nodded, and he continued. Well basically you'll be doing the same thing with the leaves, except now you'll have to cut a waterfall in half explained Sujairo, only waiting for the same outburst almost everyone makes upon hearing the exercise, which much to his delight came. How the hell am I going to cut a waterfall? This is ridiculous. How can I slice the water? Asked Naruto, earning yet another nod from Sujairo, but instead of answering right away, he thought of giving a homework assignment for Naruto. That will be your job to figure out for tomorrow. You see in one of the books, lies the answer you're looking for and it will be your assignment to find the information and explain it to me assigned Sujairo before seeing Naruto frown and then went to the kitchen for dinner without even looking at Sujairo's face, earning a slight laugh from the elder shinobi who in turn understood why Drea said it was fun to teach this brat. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. The next morning, the same ritual happened once more breakfast and waiting for his sensei to arrive for the next part of the training. Naruto understood from the books, he stayed up all night reading the secret behind slicing the waterfall. The truth was that Naruto would draw a line using Futen Ninjutsu, cutting the current water from falling entirely, keeping the first half up the line with his chakra. The other half would fall freely, because it isn't being sustained by Naruto's chakra. Suddenly, Naruto heard steps coming from the steps, and saw his new sensei. Naruto found it strange that Drea was spending a lot of time in his room resting. But he stopped thinking once Sujairo asked him the question, to which Naruto responded. Indeed, wind chakra can slice everything, even water for a couple of seconds. By using wind chakra, you can slice the water particles, which in the waterfall case, the first half will remain suspended, and the bottom half will let gravity run its course. Very good, now the theory is resolved, but we are still short of practicing it to see how you fare against the waterfall. This waterfall happens to have somewhat of a bridge right in front of the falling water, so you won't have problems with finding a spot. Now finish your breakfast and we'll begin right away said Sujairo, earning a nod from Naruto. 
A few minutes afterwards, Naruto and Su Jairo were standing right in front of the waterfall. The day wasn't sunny like yesterday, in fact it was a bit cloudy, with the prospect of rain later on. This exercise is the same principle as the leaf slice exercise, but now you'll amplify the area and cut the entire waterfall. By completing this exercise, you'll fit all the requirements needed for the first techniques I plan to teach you. However, that won't happen until you learn to be proficient in using the standard wind abilities in the midst of a physical exercise. In order to learn wind techniques, you must learn how to use them adequately. Wind techniques require concentration and patience, so you can't do it while you're either not focused on the fight or in the middle of defending from an attack. Now, use the bridge there and create as many cage bunchin you feel necessary to be able to slice the waterfall in half said Sujairo before turning his back on Naruto and proceeded to walk back home. Naruto remained watching his sensei and actually wondered why the man wouldn't be around to see his progress on the exercise. From what he read, the waterfall exercise takes a long time to complete. Doesn't matter, though Naruto thought. Like all obstacles set before me in the past, I'll overcome this as well. Tajur Cage Bunshin no Jutsi, thought Naruto as the clones immediately vanished and appeared on top of the waterfall, before extending both hands and begin the exercise. Equals 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 with Drea equals equals equals. Dressing in only a light blue kimono, Drea was sure taking his time to rest and enjoy the time in Sujairo's home. He knew that the man would be taking care of Naruto's training so he could rest all the time he wanted without worrying about Naruto being alone to train. Thinking of the blonde since they left Konoha really brought a smile on his face. Never before he saw such enthusiasm and drive to improve from someone Andrea was sure that Naruto would return to the village quite strong. He would even be amused upon wondering a fight between Kakashi and Naruto by the time he returned from the journey. Drea was looking outside from the window only to see that it had started raining when suddenly, he heard footsteps behind him. When he turned though, he was confused to see only Sujairo standing there, before he kneeled on the ground, and fixed some sake for him as well. Where is Naruto? Asked Drea displaying a serious face like he knew what the man did. He is training at the waterfall. Don't worry about the boy, Drea. He is old enough to learn that sometimes, you have to improve on your own he can't depend on others to train his whole life said Sujairo as he drank all the sake left in the cup, before pouring out so more. Drea however, snorted at the man from insinuating that Drea lifted a finger to aid in Naruto's training. You're wrong Sujairo if you think I helped him train. If much, I taught him two jutsus and how to counter genjutsu. The rest was all him. He was the one who perfected the racing gan, with one hand, and learned to amplify it. He managed to learn on his own three very useful attack jutsus, and even mastered a teijutsu style on his own. The bow staff katas, he learned by reading the scroll containing the movements. You don't need to worry about him learning how to improve his abilities on his own he knows that already explained Drea as he got up and left Sujairo who in turn smiled and looked outside at the rain. Drea grabbed an umbrella and went outside to see his prodigy. The Sanin didn't know how long Naruto was trying the exercise, but he damn well know Naruto wouldn't be able to do it right away, no matter how much he improved his skills. Truth to his wonders upon arriving, he saw Naruto and his clones attempting to slice the whole waterfall, instead, all each Naruto could do was throw water to each respective faces, not managing much. The boy was persistent, though, and wouldn't give up so soon. Also, there was something in this drive of his that amazed Drea. Even though there were quite some distance between the two, Drea could very well see the look of pure concentration that Naruto displayed upon attempting the exercise. You can do this Naruto. Slice this waterfall in half, and you'll proceed in this training. Thought Drea, as he stood there while resting the umbrella on his shoulders. Equals 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 5 hours later equals equals equals. After a minor rest followed by a soldier pill Naruto continued once again. His clones were halfway there and the waterfall was already showing signs of being sliced any minute now. This was the time that Sujairo appeared next to Drea. The rain already stopped, and the blonde could now focus more on the task at hand. How much time do you think he will take to complete? Asked Sujairo, before seeing Drea smile. Just about now, I'm afraid. The waterfall is already on the verge of slicing. 
The next one will do it, said Drea. Suddenly, his guess turned out to be right as the noise of the waterfall slicing in half with wind chakra echoed through the clearing. After the clones dissipated, Naruto remained looking at the waterfall, as in looking at his accomplishment in Futen Ninjutsu. When he turned, he saw both Sujairo and Drea looking at him from the ground, so he used a shunshin and appeared right in front of the elders. Congrats Naruto, in only two days, you managed to complete the two steps necessary to begin the real training. Now, I can see that you're exhausted so let's back home to take a shower, and then I'll show the jutsus you'll be learning from me said Sujairo, earning a nod from Naruto, who then looked at Drea who in turn was smiling in acknowledgement. Naruto didn't need to ask because he knew that look on Drea's face, and he only showed once Naruto managed to complete an exercise. Equals 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 later at night equals equals equals. After a nice shower and an amazing dinner in Naruto's mind, the blonde and Sujairo were now reading one big scroll that contained all the techniques Naruto would learn in three months. Although he wouldn't practice it for a considerable time Sujairo advised Naruto to understand each technique's theory before attempting to perform them. The list of jutsus covered all three forms of wind manipulations and the scroll contained wide details of the techniques, informing the hand seals, chakra capacity necessary jutsu level, and of course, how to perform. Naruto saw the jutsu titles, and couldn't contain his smile to go from ear to ear. Fuden de Tapa Wind Release, Great Breakthrough Jutsu. Fuden Suden no Tatsu Meiki Wind Release, Tornado Tunnel Jutsu. Fuden Kei's no Tate Wind Release, Wind Shield Jutsu. Fuden Rapushao Wind Release, Gale Wind Palm Jutsu. Fuden Kei's no Yeba Wind Release, Wind Sword Jutsu. Fuden Kei's Kiri, Wind Release, Wind Cutter Jutsu. Fuden Surezu no Tatsumeki Wind Release Slicing Tornado Jutsu. Fuden Katen Shuriken Wind Release Rotating Shuriken Jutsu. Fuden Joiyasegun Wind Release Gravity Force Jutsu. Fuden Atsuga Wind Release Pressure Damage Jutsu. Immediately, Naruto proceeded to read the first technique with confidence that he would learn everything that he needed to in order to master all these techniques in three months. Chapter 7 and the Rescue. Being located near the desert, the sun was scorching hot, and the sound of the waterfall falling on the small river would send anyone to eternal bliss at the thought of escaping the hot temperature, hence why one pervert was seen with only his belly on top of the water level, like he was on one hell of a vacation. He was hoping to enjoy every single moment of the last couple of days he had, before he and Naruto had to leave the place. Thinking hard, Jiryu couldn't figure out the next step of Naruto's training. A year and a half already passed and Naruto managed to learn quite a lot. His taijutsu skills were propelled bearing easily, the skills of a high-level chunin. Naruto even managed to create a new taijutsu style that relies heavily on wind element, which surprised both Sujairo and Jiryu at the time. Also he improved his bow staff style a lot to which Jiryu himself reasoned him to be on par with a chunin from the Sarutobi clan, and maybe rival a jounin at the end of their journey. Also, the boy's chakra-related training progressed nicely with him being almost immune to genjutsu attacks and just added close to 10 fluten jutsus on his repertoire. Duryu chuckled upon remembering Naruto's new temporary sensei gasping at the speed in which Naruto learned the jutsus, and the man really thought the blonde to be a genius. However, that was only possible because of the blonde's cage bunshin style of training. The question remained, though, about the next step. Duryu had a couple of choices to teach Naruto about which was introducing him to the art of Fuenjutsu sealing arts, or even teach the brat a new element to rely on in case his wind jutsus weren't enough to subdue the enemy. Fuenjutsu is the hardest ninja art to master and he doubted Naruto would be interested in seals, rather than simple exploding tags and storage seals, so he pushed it aside focusing on more ninjutsu. Now the question was which element to teach? He immediately left out Katan simply because of his prime affinity being wind. It wouldn't make sense for Naruto to learn two heavily offensive affinities and leave the defense side unprotected. Also thinking about it, Rayton wouldn't be considered either. So that left the Sanin with Dotan and Sutan ninjutsu for Naruto to learn for defensive issues. Dotan would be his first choice since it is Jiria's prime affinity, but he also has knowledge on Sutan techniques, and how to learn them, plus with Naruto having Fuden at his disposal Sutan elemental ninjutsu could be very useful. Plus, the brat was still 15 and he could very well be learning how to use Dotan techniques in the future. Suddenly, 
He saw what appeared to be a shift in the wind before he looked at the waterfall, only for it to be sliced in a diagonal sense, probably a result of the wind sword technique. He then turned his eyes to the opposite side of the waterfall before smirking as Naruto and Sujairo were engaging in a full-out spar. Whether or not Sujairo was going all out he didn't know, but for Naruto to manage his own against this man was nothing short of impressive. Naruto was using his bow staff while defending from Sujairo's quick and deadly blows, before performing a major backflip just as Sujairo was about to land a vicious kick on his head. While making hand seals in the air Naruto then, collected air through his lungs for Futen de Tapa wind release, great breakthrough jutsu. Sujairo smiled at the kid's ingenuity, but focused chakra to his feet so as not to be taken away by the wind. After the wind died down, Sujairo unleashed some shurikens, before throwing them in the air and making some hand seals for Futen Kaden shuriken, wind release rotating shuriken jutsu. Upon seeing this, Naruto immediately was sent on edge seeing that controlling shurikens was a very deadly technique to face. However, he didn't need to wait as suddenly Sujairo stopped swirling the shurikens near him and sent them all to attack Naruto at the same time. Seeing no other way to escape the technique's grasp, Naruto increased the speed of four sequence hand seals and once again exhaled a small gust of air before controlling the wind chakra to surround him. Futen K's no Tate wind release wind shield jutsu. After the defense dropped, Naruto saw that the shurikens were nowhere in sight so he rushed to attack Sujairo before he had the opportunity to control other shurikens. He quickly focused chakra to his bow staff to elongate the weapon and began the assault against Sujairo with a new kata he devised. It consisted of a six combo hit with the usage of the cage bunshin technique. Holding the bow staff with his both hands on Sujairo's chest area, he initiated by hitting the man on his right side, thus making Sujairo lose his air for a second before Naruto hit him on the left side, thus increasing the pain. Seeing that the man was incapacitated, Naruto then attacked the man's legs with a powerful thrust, before swirling the staff, and hitting him on the shoulder. Afterwards Sujairo managed, beyond the pain of being hit with Naruto's staff, to see that Naruto landed the staff on the ground, before resorting on it for balance as he landed an uppercut kick right on the man's chin sending him flying straight to the air where a new Naruto was waiting with a sequence of kicks, before landing one on the man's head thus sending him straight down to suffer the immeasurable pain and agony. Or so he would have, if the Sujairo he attacked was not a cage bunshin as well. As soon as the smoke dissipated Naruto heard claps coming from behind him and he turned to see his Futen sensei who in turn was demonstrating an approving smile on his own, considering that Naruto displayed some serious skills. Very impressive Naruto-kun that clone of mine took some serious hit, it took a heavy load of my chakra to keep him from vanishing throughout that sequence of yours. I'd correct to assume, it's one of your creations. Asked Sujairo to which Naruto nodded, before focusing chakra once more on the staff to shorten its handle for the blonde to place it inside its holster. Yes it is Sujairo sensei. The original one doesn't involve the cage bunching, and it ends on the fourth hit aiming the shoulder. So. Now what am I going to learn? Asked Naruto, being all enthused, which earned a smile from his sensei in recognition. Actually Naruto, there isn't much I can teach you that you couldn't get on your own with time. You may not realize that you've been here for four months now, and you've learned all three forms of food and manipulation said Sujairo before seeing Naruto's bewildered look of realization that his elemental training is over. But Sujairo wasn't far from being silent. It's with satisfaction that I say you managed to complete the training regimen, I set for you and for that, I believe congratulations are in order. Before you, only one ever managed to finish my training, and that was the Yandan Keisuke, Meikami has his hunger for power soul right now smiled Sujairo. I appreciate all the training you gave me Sujairo sensei, and I hope to improve my skills to be on your level, or at least hope to cope better with it the next time we spar smiled Naruto, gaining a nod in recognition from his sensei. Believe me kid, when I say you won't take long to reach my level. You have an advantage everyone would die for, and that's your chakra abundance. By using the cage bunchin experience you could grow by leaps and bounds, and probably become the best wind user in all of the elemental nations. I believe you above protecting those precious to you, would like to set out a name for yourself isn't it? Asked Sujairo, before he saw Naruto nod, and he continued. Then, you'll be indeed famous. Learning food and element is both time and chakra demanding, but anyone who masters the element is presumed to be feared. 
You remember reading about the tales of Keisuke's cage Tenshi, didn't you? He quoted that wind element is mostly known for its unpredictability, one minute it's blowing west, and the other it's on the opposite direction. By being a master of the wind, you can become even more unpredictable than you already are Naruto, and I feel very proud to be the one helping you become the next case Tenchu smiled Sujairo as he saw the beamed expression on Naruto's face. Arigato, sensei said Naruto as he bowed in respect to his sensei, before he heard the voice of Jiryu approaching. Great. You stay with him for four months and bow to him in respect. You stay with me for the duration of our trip, and you call me a pervert. What happened to the respect? Grumbled Jiryu, earning a warm laugh from Sujairo, but he soon would have to hold his stomach when Naruto opened his mouth to speak. Why would I call you any differently than what you are Aero sensei You even admit that you're a super pervert said Naruto, earning a sigh in dismay from Jiria as he saw Sujairo on the ground bending over, while holding his stomach from laughing so hard. Okay all jokes aside Naruto since your training is over, I believe we overstated our welcome in Sujairo's house. Go pack your things and tomorrow we'll be leaving said Jiria, earning a nod from Naruto as he simply walked towards the mansion, thus leaving the two elders alone to talk. So, how many he got this time? Asked Jiria, earning a smile from Sujairo as he showed what appeared to be the same disc used to test the strength of the wind affinity. Jiria could very well note an increase in the number of cuts than last time. 32 cuts total simply amazing. No matter if he cheats time with the cage bunchin, he's a prodigy and you know it. I don't have to repeat myself more than two times when explaining the theory, and he managed to achieve everything through practice. It's been an interesting last four months that I can say for sure said Sujairo to which Jiryu smiled. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. After leaving his senseus, Naruto walked calmly towards the mansion. The sun was just setting down and the beautiful orange hue on the sky practically forced a smile on his features. Adding the waterfall on the landscape, it was a picture to be forever kept in his mind. He kind of wished that he wouldn't have to leave so soon, Sujairo sensei was strict in training, but Naruto could very well see that the man's is as strict as his own drive to be stronger. Also, being acknowledged by such a being was like a boost to Naruto's pride. Nevertheless, he very well knew that for his sake and for Konoha, Naruto needed to become stronger and as such, he needed much more experience than he gathered since he started his career. He needed to fight against opponents who wouldn't think of holding back in case of an opening like either Sujairo or Jiryu does, he needed to have a better grasp of the idea of kill or die that every shinobi has to learn throughout his career, and he couldn't learn it here. After arriving at his room Naruto collected a medium-sized scroll, before opening to review a specific kanji. He then, placed all his clothes on top of the scroll, including some books he earned from Sujairo to improve on Fuden Ninjutsu before focusing on a single-handed seal. Immediately when a bunch of clothes and books were, now the only thing visible was the same kanji now revolved around some new set of kanjis, meaning that this scroll was already full and therefore unable to use. Just because Jiryu didn't think to teach him Fuenjutsu doesn't mean he couldn't teach the very basic knowledge, like how to seal his personal belongings inside a scroll. The pervert thought about teaching how to create explosive tags, but then thought against it. After sealing everything inside the scroll, Naruto laid on his bed and looked at the window as the sun was vanishing little by little and it was almost getting dark outside. However, just as the moon appeared, the effects of the battle ran out and soon fatigue appeared. The boy didn't even hear Sujairo's shouts of calling him for some dinner. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. Once everything was all set, Naruto and Jiri set food outside Sujairo's house for the first time in four months. It felt a bit awkward for both Naruto and Jiri to step in the other dimension, and they had to take some time to adjust to this new feeling. Wow that was weird said Naruto as he hold his head so that it would stop spinning, a sentiment shared by the pervert. You can say that again. Man I forgot about this rush of traveling dimensions. Now, let's get going Naruto. There is a village nearby about 10 miles that we can settle and then continue on our next destination said Jiryu earning a nod from Naruto as they started walking. Although he didn't say anything though, Jiryu couldn't help but smile upon seeing the brat walking a proud smile on his features, before he saw that the blonde was going to ask him something. So Aero sensei where are we going now and what will I be learning? 
asked Naruto, earning a smile from Jiria. Don't worry about that for now Naruto, after we settle in, we'll take a nice long bath at the onsen you know, relax a little bit. I've noticed you didn't let your body heal from the heavy strain that Sujairo placed you in, so we're still overdue some relaxation period. Remember we still have lots of time to learn more techniques and train more explained to Ryu to which Naruto nodded, while looking forward their destination. Sujairo sensei was sure strict, but in the end, I really managed to learn 10 new techniques that will surely prove useful in the future. I guess you're right then. Let's relax a bit said Naruto, before hearing the pervert snort upon hearing what he thought he did. Well, 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 this is a first. Izumaki Naruto just wanting to pass training for relaxing the world is at an end, I can see it dramatized to Ryu before smiling in delight upon hearing Naruto grumbling some incoherent curse words aimed at his sensei. What he could say, he just loved to tease with the brat. It didn't take long until they arrived at the village and settled inside an inn which happened to have a vast public onsen for the two to rest their bodies, well in Naruto's case anyway. The pervert let out a sigh in relaxation as he let the hot water relax every muscle of his body, while hanging his arms outside the pool. He then, looked at Naruto only to see that the blonde was in deep thought once again. Duryu didn't like when Naruto did this, and it was plainly obvious the reason. Upon being asked, Naruto would always show some level of doubt regarding the idea of relaxing while he could be training instead. Actually, Jiri feared that the boy would become too power-hungry and immediately set out to talk to the boy, like hearing the boy's thoughts on these troubling subjects. Naruto, tell me what's wrong. You don't seem to be so relaxed, asked Jiri, before seeing Naruto taking a glimpse at the pervert from the corner of his eyes before looking back to the water in dismay. Oh, it's nothing really. I just wished that I would figure out what was wrong with me beforehand and half the trouble Team 7 went through wouldn't happen. I'm not saying I'm blaming myself for Sasuke's defection, that's his own doing whether or not he was being subjected to the cursed seal's will. I could have covered more ground at the academy and probably learn every bit of the necessary information, thus leaving space for the more advanced material I should be reading for my age. Things like accuracy, politics, traps, basic teijutsu, basic genjutsu, all of them I've only managed to learn after the whole Sasuke's defection incident said Naruto, while still looking down, clearly not letting go of his feeling of regret. Duryu for his turn at least had the decency to nod while believing that at least this time is different. However, the brat was delusional and he needed to hear a truth or two. Naruto, you better listen intently to what I'm going to say, and you better throw that thought of yours away. Maybe you should have paid more attention at school, maybe not. Anyway, what happened in the past is unchangeable, and it won't matter to sulk on it. This feeling of regret you possess is out of line, you can't just hope that things were different in the past. What happened then must remain, as such, what you must worry about is the present and the future. You're now managed to cover the entire elemental manipulation training in only 4 months where only Jounin level ninja manages to truly master explain to Ryu before he saw Naruto looking at him, listening to what his mentor have to say. Dwelling on the past will only cause you to be bitter and not trustworthy. You want to change, then change for here on out, become the ninja of your dreams, and will train harder to achieve that dream said Ryu, before smiling upon seeing Naruto smiling as well. One condition, though brat, if you say this to me once more, you'll be riding on top of Game Ubuntu, until you learn it the right way smiled Jiryu, which in turn earned a nod in acceptance from Naruto. Arigato, sensei said Naruto, though shockingly as the situation seemed to Jiryu, he didn't say a word. After an hour and a half, sensei and student were to get some dinner at the only restaurant in town, which made all types of food. Naruto and Jiryu ordered a sushi special combo that was actually enough for four people but Naruto guaranteed the owner that he would even request more after it was over, which earned a chuckle from Jiria. So Aero sensei what's next? Asked Naruto, earning a nod from Jiria, since Naruto managed not to do any kind of exercise today. Well, let's see. You managed in one year and a half cover Teijutsu, Bow Staff, Genjutsu, and Fuden Ninjutsu. You already learned how to increase the racing gan, and I expect you to keep improving with time. What's left basically, what I can teach you actually, is either the art of sealing called Fuenjutsu, or a second ninjutsu element. 
Of course you still need to train your food and techniques to get adjusted to them and learn how to use them in different scenarios, so we're going to take the remaining of this year for you to cover all these fighting scenarios. The last year will surely be spent with Sutan manipulation said Jiryu, earning a question look from Naruto. Why Sutan specifically? I know that Katan and Raytan are out of the picture since they are heavy offensive elements, but what about Dotan manipulation? Asked Naruto, before seeing the sensei smile as the sushi dish was served along with some tea for the two. Indeed, out of the other elements, I was in doubt between Sutan and Dotan. However, there is a new concept of ninjutsu nowadays called collaboration jutsus. It consists of two shinobis, or in the rarest cases, one shinobi performing two techniques that merge with one another creating a more powerful and more destructive technique. Now, there are certain elements susceptible for the collaboration jutsus. For example, by merging a grand fireball technique with the great breakthrough jutsu, the wind will double the fireball size. Fire jutsus are more suitable because they can merge with Futon, Dotan, and Raytan, leaving Sutan of course for obvious reasons. Sutan is the next best for collaboration jutsus being able to merge with all three except Katan for the same reasons with me so far. Asked Ryu before seeing Naruto eat some sushi and nod for the pervert to continue. Your prime affinity is wind and as such, you can use collaboration jutsus with only Sutan, because wind nullifies lightning and it doesn't do anything with earth-based techniques. In the end, if you were to learn collaboration jutsus, the only other element suitable for doing so would be Sutan explained Jiria as he ingested a tuna sushi. I understand, however you said yourself that a collaboration jutsu needs two shinobis. How can I do it on my own? Asked Naruto, earning a nod from Jiria, since he was expecting this question. Indeed in theory, the collaboration jutsu are performed by two shinobis. However, you Naruto is one of those rare cases I mentioned before. You do remember how you used cage bunching to train food and techniques, didn't you? Then you do realize that you could use the collaboration jutsu with your own clone said Jiryu, before he saw Naruto smile at a new attack possibility, but Jiryu wasn't finished. Also, because of your wind affinity, your defensive ninjutsu is severely limited to only the K's no Tate technique. With Sutan ninjutsu, you could learn more defensive techniques that could save your life as well as those you protect in the future. So, with all that explained, Sutan is the best element to teach you right now, understood? Asked Jiryu to which Naruto nodded as he ingested the last sushi, before calling the waiter to bring in a new set of sushi to which Jiryu smiled and asked from some tea as well. Equals 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 a couple miles away from their position equals equals equals. Pacing from trees at unimaginable speed and almost out of breath, Uzuti Yurgao was trying to escape the wrath of what appeared to be two shinobis from the Il Anu forces called Boulder. Another one of her s rank suicidal missions headed towards Iwo where Konoha found suspicious information about a powerful missing nin threatening to border into fire country. She along with two other Anbis went to investigate only for a brutal assault to occur before the Anbu team managed to kill the missing nin. Their price though was too high as two of Konoha Anbu was killed by the same boulder Anbu who was supposed to kill the missing nin. Now, although Yorgao was being chased for no reason, those boulder Anbus were maniacs and wouldn't stop at nothing to have a hold of her to kill her, or even worse if one of them decides to have his way with her beforehand. Along the way, she was dodging with the best of her abilities the incoming shurikens and mudballs. However, her chakra was almost entirely used against the missing nin, and she didn't have much to use for escape. Also, Konoha was too far away for her to even consider calling for backup. Her alternatives were wearing thin, before she views a small village with maybe 10 or 15 houses for her to hide. However, as soon as Yurgao changed her course of action, she cursed the heavens after one single mud ball hit her on her left leg and because of her immediate pain, she couldn't focus on landing on the next tree, thus following mercilessly on the ground with a heavy thud before spitting some blood from her mouth. Just as the ninjas landed near her, she knew her time was up. Her legs were heavily bruised because of the Dorier Dango technique, and a couple of ribs were broken because of the fall. Not to mention that she was almost out of chakra as she heard one of them talking about what she feared. You've been a very bad girl, you know. And bad girls deserve a punishment laughed the one from the right, burning a snarl in anger from your gal who wanted to be killed already not raped. Oh Matsuro, finish her off already. We have to get back to Iwa said the other, 
but this Matsuro guy waved him off and kneeled down next to your gal before he removed the woman's mask. She could see from the guy's face that he enjoyed seeing her angered face and it was plainly obvious that he wouldn't be satisfied until he did the worst deeds to her body possible. However, before Matsuro managed to take her pants off, everyone was stunned to hear some shouting Fudin Rapusha wind release, Gale wind palm jutsi before two focused jets of wind hit Matsuro head on, thus sending him straight towards his comrade, before both were sent flying. Yorgao was at loss of what just happened before he saw what appeared to be a blonde man jumping in front of her as in protecting her while facing the boulder Anbu. She, then, sensed a hand on her shoulder before turning her face to see one of the San and Juria. Juri-sama. What are you doing? Here. Asked your Dao, before Juriyu ushered her to save her strength. Easy there Anbu. I don't know your name, but right now we must get you into safety said Juriyu before he saw Naruto standing against the Ambi members. Aero sensei take her away from here, I'll take care of them said Naruto as he started a large sequence of hand seals. Duryu smiled at his student and took Yurgao with him back to the village, who by now was unconscious due to chakra exhaustion and utter pain on her legs and ribs. However, she stayed awake long enough to see the blonde preparing for an attack. We're not letting that bitch go, you old geezer charged Matsuro until he looked at the blonde in front of him finishing the hand sequence, before whispering the name to the winds. Fuden Surezu no Tatsumeki wind release slicing tornado jutsu. Naruto exhaled a strong gust of wind through his mouth before it transformed into a huge hurricane and charged against the Anbis who didn't have the time to evade because of the proximity, and got hit dead on. Once inside the hurricanes, Matsuro and his partner began receiving multiple slashes from every side while Naruto took the opportunity to follow Jiriya to their hotel, not even bothering to see that the ninjas' bodies were like chopped meat sprawled across the forest. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. The next day, the weather wasn't as nice as the day before. It was raining heavily and Naruto was playing some shouchi with Jiriya while waiting for the woman to wake up. After placing her on a bed, Jiriya managed to contact a local doctor who helped cure your dad's wounds and even wrap the place where she broke her ribs with bandages. Right after arriving at the hotel, Naruto questioned Jiriya about what happened to her to which the Sanin could only surmise it as a failed mission. Jiriya also mentioned that he communicated with Konoha about the female Anbu and received info regarding her status. Also, Naruto heard Jiriya talking about an order coming from the Hokage ordering the female Anbu to take a long vacation and to remain under Jiriya's care until he and Naruto returned from the training trip. So, while watching the heavy rain outside, Naruto and Jiriya were playing Shouji, unaware of the fact that Yurgao already recovered consciousness. Slowly opening her eyes, her senses became to respond as she managed to hear the sound of rain outside. Immediately, she woke up alarmed fearing that she was captured only to look at an empty room, before she heard the same voice she heard yesterday. Ah, uh, it seems you woke up, we're worried you take a while to do that said Jiriya alerting Yurgao of both his and the blonde's presence. It took a while but Yurgao remembered where she saw the blonde before and also realized that he was the one that saved her from being raped by the shinobis from Iwa. Looking below her sheets, she was relieved to see that her Anu clothes were still on although they looked better before. Suddenly, the pain from her broken ribs hit her and she gasped from it while unconsciously placing her hand near the bandaged area. Once we brought you in, I found a doctor who took great care of your wounds. You should be fine within a week smiled Jiriya, earning a nod from Yurgao, while she saw the blonde smiling at her as well. Well, it seems that an appreciation is in order. Ah, Izumaki isn't it? Asked Yurgao before Naruto nodded. Izumaki Naruto is the name, and you don't have to thank me. Aero sensei here sensed the heavy usage of chakra and told us to see what was happening. How are you feeling? Asked Naruto. My rib still hurts, excuse me Jiriusama, I need to contact Konoha of my fail. Said Yurgao, but was interrupted by Jiria. No need. I've already contacted Sinead about your status and she issued an order to you, it's in this scroll said Jiria before he gave the scroll for the woman to read. Yurgao san. I hear from Jiria's intel that you managed to complete the mission you and two other Anbiz were sent to. He also said that you're badly injured and would have been killed if he and Naruto didn't stop the Anbis. Also, since he didn't see you with the other, 
I will assume them to be missing in action until further information. Now, it's came to my attention that you have participated in all of Kanaha's and suicidal missions, and in each one of them you returned with bad bruises and chakra exhaustion. You're one of this village's finest example of what Kunoichi should be, and as such I cannot afford to lose you. As of right now, I'm issuing a long-term mission, and it consists of staying with Naruto and Jiria until they are scheduled to return from their training trip in one and a half years. Godame Hokage. After reading it, Yogao suddenly lost her focus and started looking down to the ground. She received a new mission which didn't involve her sacrificing her life in near-death situations thus gaining enough time for the old tears and scars of her life to appear once more. She then looked at the two. So it appears that we're expending a lot of time together Naruto, Jiryu-sama. What are we going to do for one and a half year? Asked Yogao to which Jiryu smiled. You are to rest Lady Doctor's instructions. We will remain here until you feel ready to walk, after that we're going to see country. There is a place there where I intend to teach Naruto here about Sutan manipulation. For now, though, please get some rest. Our lunch will be brought here, so we don't have to leave the room said Jiryu, before he heard the sound of the door knocking and opened for the attendant to leave the lunch on the bedroom table, before leaving, with Jiryu following. Where are you going, Aero sensei Asked Naruto, as he got up to check the lunch. Yorgao in the meanwhile, was wondering about the term Naruto used to address one of the Sanin. One of my spies reached me regarding some news, his place is not so far away from here. Help her eat, okay? Said Jiryu, before closing the door leaving the two alone. Naruto, then inspected the food, and then turned to the Anbu. Well, I don't know if you like these steamy vegetables or not. But Aero sensei said I have to stop eating ramen and eat some healthy food, ah I'm sorry but I don't know your name asked Naruto. Actually on normal occasions, sharing my identity would ruin my chances of being in Amakor. But considering the situation, I guess it's okay. My name is Uzuti Yorgao and to answer your first question, I do like steamy vegetables, but I'm afraid you'll have to help me. Just by lifting my arm, my ribs hurt said Yorgao, but something about this whole ordeal pissed her off. The reason was that she was kind of a self-reliant person. Naruto, though didn't seem to mind as he grabbed the dish and one hashi to feed her. As he sat down next to her, Yugao turned to address him. I was kind of curious about how you address Jiryu-sama. Asked Yugao, before seeing Naruto leave out a little laugh. Oh come on I'm sure you've been to one of Kanaha's onsens before right? There isn't a single woman in the elemental nations that wasn't piqued by the almighty Gama Senen. That's the reason for his nickname. Plus, it's nice to see his face after I call him that laugh Naruto while grabbing a broccolis and positioning for Yurgao to eat it, to which she smiled and ate the vegetable. Yurgao found it strange about this feeling of peace she felt upon seeing him laugh, and also understood why Naruto called Jiria like that from all the times she had to leave the onsen because of the man peeping at the women. So, what can you tell me about the Anbu? I heard from Aero Sensei that they are the elite of Shinobi and Konoha, so one must be really good to join the rank isn't it? Asked Naruto, earning a nod from Yurgao as she accepted another broccoli, before swallowing. Well, you have to be at least Jounin to join our ranks and even so, it's necessary to have complementary skills that make you different from the rest. Are you interested? Asked Yurgao, before seeing Naruto nod but with some reluctance as expected from everyone. I don't know, I'm still a genin and probably won't be a chunin until I come back from this trip. It'll take even more time for me to be a jounin. Said Naruto as he grabbed one of the broccolis and ingested it before he offered one for the woman who gladly accepted and ate it. Suddenly, one memory hit her and she realized Naruto was facing two andu shinobi on his own. It was very impressive you taking on those andus. Before going unconscious, I noticed the food and jutsu you used to save me stated your gao, before seeing Naruto blush in appraisal. After all, it was the first time a woman praised him for his abilities and not smash him in the head like Sakura did. Well, Fuden is my prime affinity and I know wide-scale jutsu that leaves the enemy no alternative, but face it head-on and hope to survive those and you sure didn't I have a question though Kanaha's policy is about teamwork, but you're alone against those two. What happened to your team? Asked Naruto, but the lost look on Yurga's face told him everything and he feared something back happened. 
Two other AMI members were sent along with me for what we advanced Shinobi calls suicidal missions. We managed to defeat an A-ranked missing nin that was trying to enter fire country however those Anbis from Il wanted to kill the man hence why they killed my two comrades. I didn't have enough chakra so I fled and that's where you and Jiryu-sama found me explained your Gao, burning a nod from Naruto as he finished his plate and then placed at the table. I never lost a comrade, so I don't know what's like I'm really sorry, though, or what happened were they close to you? Asked Naruto before seeing your Gao negate with her head. No. They weren't, at least not more than colleagues, said your Gao, but stopped while unable to form the words to express that they died in the line of their duty. Ever since her fiancé's death, she has been throwing her life at risk so that she would forget the immeasurable pain that fills her heart every day, but while she wanted nothing more than this, she didn't want people to go down with her if such a thing occurred. For some unknown reason, every time she has been close to death, but never she walked towards the light to finally meet her dead boyfriend once more. You don't need to explain it to me. Ah, do you want anything else? I see the rain is already subsiding, so I'll prepare for my bow staff exercise routine said Naruto. Well, resting doesn't really suit me any good, so you could help me get up and take me with you smiled your gao, earning a nod from Naruto as he made a familiar hand seal before two cage bunchins appeared next to your gao, before helping her get up and go outside. Your Gao was surprised with the usage of Cage Bunshin, but didn't say anything. Upon arriving at a clear which happened to be the hotel garden, Naruto's clones helped Your Gao to sit on a bench nearby, before being dispelled as she got to watch Naruto pick his weapon, before initiating his dance against the imaginary opponents. While watching the martial arts showdown, Your Gao just felt the need to smile as the scenery before her. After the run stopped, the sun's power opened the skies and forced his sunlight to illuminate the once clouded day. Also, since Naruto's hair was that golden blonde, the sunlight actually increased the color tone to a point that your gal wondered if it was shining. Also, she could see the smile displayed on his face as he went through some really advanced katas of the bow staff style peculiar to the Sartobi clan. In fact, any shinobi who wanted to explore the use of weapons in order to use it as an extension of the body must practice daily to a point that using it becomes second nature, and your gal was surprised to see a person so focused besides herself and for all her might, she couldn't finish her train of thought. Her heart hurt immediately, thus preventing her from comparing Naruto's drive to become better with the weapon in a similar way to her deceased fiancé she was so engrossed in this train of thought, that she didn't realize a new presence has just arrived. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? You know the Sandime was my sensei, and not once did I see this level of dedication regarding the bow staff style. I guess Naruto has taken a liking to it said Jiria as he took a seat next to the momentarily surprised woman, before he spoke again. I thought I told that you needed to rest, didn't I? Asked Jiria earning a nod from Yurgao before she looked back at Naruto who just finished one advanced move that consisted of him extending the staff over his shoulder while extending his arms, holding it and swirling his body, taking as many enemies as possible with it. I don't appreciate resting in a room for one whole week. Besides, this is not the first time I'm in this situation said your gao to which Jiryu nodded. I know that, I've confirmed with my old teammate about your status. Uzuti your gao, Ambi captain level shinobi with an impressive record of successful missions, only losing to former Ambi captains Achiha Itachi and Hatake Kakashi. Was soon to be married with Tokubetsu Jounin and Jeku Hayate, but he was lost during the Sand Sound invasion. Ever since you've went to one suicidal missions after another, barely escaping out alive in probably the majority of them. Reported to Ryu, but he stopped when he saw the foregoing look on her face, before he switched to Naruto who was still practicing. I somehow knew that you didn't go for some information, instead you asked for my file. As to why I wonder. What business you have with my life, and what missions I do take. With all due respect to Ryu-sama, you don't have the authority to. Said your Gao but stopped from fear of overstepping her boundaries, but Jiryu only smiled and landed a hand on her shoulder. I'm sorry if I intruded in your life like this, but I needed to know a thing or two about you, because of Naruto stated Jiryu. If you're asking whether, or not, I hate him for the Kyubi, all you had to do was ask. And no, I don't hate him, I never did. I was merely a child at the time and my parents were samurais on the moment of joining Konoha. No one precious to me died because of him, and if it did, 
I'd know the difference between the fox demon and the one who keeps it jailed. But there is more to it, isn't it? This mission isn't only for training him asked your gal, before she saw the pervert nod in positive with his head. Since you're an Anbu, I'm sure you heard of this new Akatsuki organization? Asked Ryu before your gal nodded and he continued. They consist of S-ranked missing nins from all the hidden villages with the purpose of collecting the tail demons and Achiha Itachi happens to be one of their members, along with former member of the Swordsmen of the Mist Hoshikage Kaizam. Both extremely powerful shinobis being on pair with my skills, and they happen to be the ones after Naruto in order to get the beast from within his stomach. This mission is both for his training and his protection against the Akatsuki. So, I saw your file in order to assess your skills in helping both with his protection and his training. I understood you have a prime affinity for Sutan and you're one of Kanaha's top weapon user, which makes you perfect for teach him improve explained Ryu to which your gao nodded. Well, seeing as I'm here with you two for the duration of this trip, I might as well do something however, if Akatsuki appears, I won't be much help against them stated your gal. You won't need to actually. They won't attack him with me around. Last time, they tried luring me away from Naruto so that they could move in for the capture. However, in case they manage to find us and move in for a fight, I'll hold Itachi since he's the most dangerous one. You'll pair with Naruto against Kaizam, with the brat's long-scale jutsus he can use it to escape and I would follow shortly afterwards with my toad ninjutsu explained Ryu, earning a nod from your gao while she was watching Naruto, now switching to food and practice as he began to control the wind to swirl around his body. Suddenly just as Naruto switched to a different hand seal, the once small gust of wind transformed into a hurricane before the blonde relinquished his control, and the once gathered wind was dispersed through the air. I have a feeling though, that in a few years time, he will be a force not to be trifled with. I'm still dazzled by his control over the wind element said your gao, to which Toriyu nodded. Even though I say he has the skills of a chunin, inside I know that he's stronger than a low-level jounin. By the time we come back, he'll be strong enough to give the Akatsuki a run for their money stated Toriyu as the scene shifted to Naruto once again focusing the wind around him, but now for a different hand seal as suddenly a strong gust of wind was sent forward, but with not so much chakra, but more control, so as not to damage the hotel garden. While watching Yogao couldn't help but think about her next year and a half and how much of an influence will Naruto leave on her, if what she felt earlier was any indication. Equals 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 one week later equals equals equals. One week later, the group composed of a Sanin, an Anbu captain, and a Genin, set out for their next destination. Yogao did let go of the Anbu clothes, since it would be too inconspicuous to walk around wearing that without her mask, and she purchased a new set of clothes, consisting of black cargo paints, a new pair of grey boots and a fishnet shirt covered with a jounin style vest. During the course of the week, she and Naruto managed to form a nice level of bonding sharing conversations about people they know, shinobi skills and even some gossip about her ex Ambi captain and Naruto's jounin sensei, who actually were the same person. While sharing those conversations, Yogao found strange that Naruto managed to maintain a decent level of conversation with her, because she knew that those of his age usually focused on more trivial manner. Naruto explained to her about some aspects of his life albeit not the darkest part, but just a glimpse of it which urged him to learn things that he wouldn't have to until the right moment, thus getting a nod from Yogao and understanding. After all growing up alone and without assistance was tough for anyone to top that, he was also hated for something he didn't do. Naruto also told some aspects of his training, even the part about him learning what was like to take a man's life even though he was already beaten to which your gao nodded in understanding since it's a very important fear all shinobi have and can lead to unexpected surprises if one couldn't find it in his right mind to do what was needed. The last member of the group actually remained distant throughout the week, only watching with a smirk the interaction between Naruto and your gao. He knew from Sinead regarding the reasons for her choice in performing suicidal missions, but after a week of bonding, he could very well see that Naruto was indeed having an impact in her way of thinking. After all, because of what Naruto went through, he could socialize and maybe even understand others' pain better than anybody else, hence why the pervert believed that Naruto could be the one to wake her from her fiancé's loss. Suddenly, though, the perverted mind of his clicked at the possibility of a new bestseller as he grabbed his little notebook and began scribbling a few ideas. 
By seeing this though Naruto had the decency to sigh in dismay and explain to Yurgao that sometimes he have some sort of breakthrough about a new idea for his porn, and then he begins to write things while giggling like a fangirl upon seeing an Achiha. Snorting in realization of that damn book, Yurgao couldn't help but shiver at the possibility of her being a character in this new book of his a thought surprisingly shared by Naruto as they walked towards the place where Naruto would learn Sutan manipulation and better improve his wind techniques. Chapter 8 Understanding One Another a few days went by since the group set trip once more and their destination was a place Drea knew that would be splendid for Naruto to learn how to temper with the water element. The perverted Sanin, though, wanted to keep it a secret from his traveling peers, even though both Naruto and Yurgao kept asking questions about it. The woman was fairly certain they were heading to water country because of the direction they were taking, but while she knew its geography, the country itself was foreigner to her. All she knew was that water country, just like fire country, has its own hidden ninja village called Kirigakure. Right now, the group found a little cottage on the way and decided to rest a little bit before setting foot once more towards Drea's destination. Taking advantage of the situation, Naruto chose to perform one special exercise he learned from Sujairo Sensei. While Yurgao and Drea were talking about Konoha a bit, the blonde took a sit on the ground before crossing his legs in a sort of meditation position. He then, closed his eyes and positioned his hands on the ram seal in order to mold the necessary chakra for this technique to work. Suddenly, the wind suffered a major shift around Naruto as he continued to focus on molding the Futen-type chakra around and also beneath him. While the blonde was attempting the exercise, the excessive usage of chakra alerted Yurgao and Drea who then stopped what they were doing and looked at the blonde to see what was going on with him. The woman was puzzled about the whole ordeal but she had a feeling that the pervert knew what the blonde was doing if his smile was any indication. This is an exercise Naruto learned from a friend of mine regarding the usage of Futen Chakra. In a couple minutes, you'll see a very surprising feat smile Drea as he managed to spike your gas curiosity. A while later, just like the Sanin predicted, the woman watched in amazement as Naruto suddenly lifted off the ground and started levitating slowly. She looked at Drea with a dumbfounded look, which to the man was obvious that she was demanding an explanation as to how he managed to levitate by just using chakra alone. By focusing food and chakra on certain tankatsis Naruto can propel his body off the ground and be able to maintain a constant flow of chakra in order to maintain his position for some time. My friend saw his chakra abundance and taught him this exercise. It consists on a very advanced exercise of chakra control. By practicing it, not only can Naruto expand his chakra capacity, which is already big by the way, he can also improve his elemental chakra control to the point of knowing just the exact quantity of chakra to be used for each technique explained Drea as he kept watching the blonde performing admirably. Yorgao on the other hand, wondered about the Futen element and its peculiarities. I happened to come across some Futen users back in Anbu, but since it requires a heavy load of chakra no one actually favors using the element alone from fear of losing chakra in the midst of battle. Naruto, on the other hand doesn't even seem phased by using so much. How long can he hold this technique until he grows tired? Ask your Yurgao though she never took her eyes away from the blonde while talking to the Sanin. Normally, in about 10 or 15 minutes, he stops, and you can see drops of sweat from his face. However, that happened two months ago. Nowadays, I wouldn't be surprised if he managed to uphold the 20-minute barrier and not even show any hints of tiredness explained Drea earning a nod from Yurgao as she crossed her arms. After that, no more conversation was shared between the two as Yurgao just stared at the blonde performing the exercise. In the short time, she got to meet the blonde, surprised was a word that could describe what she was feeling at the moment. While she didn't think of labeling him as the demon he keeps prisoner, she actually thought people disliked him, because of the unknown number of pranks he'd always pull when he was young. However, after spending some time with him, she found the boy to be quite entertaining and fun to hang out with, not to mention the fact that sparring with him on occasions, managed to drift away her angst somewhat. After the group left, Drea would set Naruto and Yurgao against each other on just weapons fight, and while Naruto was nowhere near Yurgao's level of proficiency, he managed to tire the woman out because of his stamina. Because of this Yogao found herself sleeping better than before, whether it was because of the new company or said company tiring her down to near unconsciousness, she wasn't aware but either way she was thankful for the first time she was able to close her eyes at night and open them the next day since her fiancé died. Of course, 
The nightmares still occurred from time to time, but they were less frequent as her body had to replenish its energy. Also as far as conversations went Naruto and Yurgao would often exchange some battle experiences and Naruto would share information about the new generation of Konoha's ninja force namely Konoha 11 of course being 11 since the Achiha trader decided it was better to go kiss some snakes as then remaining in the village, slowly building his reputation. Fifteen minutes passed and both Drea and Yurgao felt the wind returning to normal and Naruto landing on the ground before getting up and turned to look at his audience. I wasn't aware I was performing a show here commented Naruto as he got up and adjusted his clothes before approaching the other two. With that much chakra being used at once I'm rather surprised we're the only two watching brat. I can see you got better than last time. I can see as well that you're not as tired as before said Drea, earning a nod from Naruto. I'm actually a little bit winded, but certainly not as bad as before. So, can we go already, or is there a need to rest a little bit more? Asked Naruto, but was surprised when Yurgao showed an amused grin, but kept to herself though. It surely was a first, Naruto and Drea thought. Upon questioning as to the motive, she simply explained that when it comes to training Naruto could be rather impatient, which earned a snicker from Drea and a frown from Naruto. It didn't take long until the group set foot outside once more, heading towards where Drea wanted to go. During the way, Yogao was examining Naruto's bow staff a little bit as in administering its weight and how Naruto could perform faster movements with it. Naruto, meanwhile was watching Yogao's analytical eyes with enthusiasm. Discussing certain aspects about weapons certainly perked the blonde's interest, and he wanted to know more about how to treat your weapon as if it was your own limb. Yogao was content enough to explain some things to him since, even though he was outright eager to learn more about it, Never once did he demanded or acted like a child pouting about wanting to learn more about it. After throwing the staff from one hand to another, she then gave it back to Naruto who then used chakra to short the staff's length and place it on his back, before he paid attention to the weapon user. Your weapon is well balanced, and not very heavy allowing you to minister faster movements which would disorient the enemy. However, Naruto, you must take into account that every weapon has its weakness. The katana, for example, is weak against multiple opponents, so it takes much of the user's skills to be able to take on against a group of enemies whereas with the staff, you're better equipped to fight them together. Being that said the bow staff fails when it comes to speed and agility in moves. You do remember how I managed to enter your defense so easily, right? Asked your Gao, before Naruto nodded, and she continued with her assessment. So in order for you to eliminate this weakness is to predict my movements and act accordingly. How can I predict your movements? I only act once I see your intentions replied Naruto. Not sure if he understood the concept behind using the weapon as an extension of his body, and Yurgao felt certain that the blonde was in the right track here, albeit a little uncertain of his skills. Naruto, that's what it means to use the weapon as if it was an extension of your body. In plain Taijutsu or even in Jutsu match mostly it's your instincts that guide you with it. You're able to start hand seals just because the opponent started walking towards you or you raise your arm in defense when your instincts tell you to even though you didn't actually see the enemy move. Everything is purely based on instinct. Don't worry, though when this training is over your body will be predisposed to move accordingly to the enemy's movements, smiled your Gao to her new student. Naruto for his part was quite beamed at the possibility of learning from a person like your gal. Her skills with the sword was unheard of, at least as far as the blonde's knowledge went, and the fact that she was more than willing to teach him was a plus in his opinion. Ni, Yogao san I understood from the pervert over there that you're also a water user. Is it so hard to master? I mean, because of the fact that it's not my affinity, and all. Asked Naruto earning a nod in the positive from your gap. I wouldn't say hard per se, it's just time demanding that's all. You can grasp the theory easy enough, the problem is that, since it isn't your affinity, your body would take more time to adjust than you normally have with Wooten techniques. Once again though don't worry about time because we've got plenty to get you in shame regarding the bow staff and Sutan ninjutsu. Explained your gap. She then, saw the beaming smile from the blonde, and couldn't help but smile as well. Drea explained to her how nice it's to teach someone like Naruto because he would absorb everything like a sponge, and also because of his chakra capacity, he could go on and on until he managed to master the exercise. 
not to mention the strange but nice feeling deep inside her heart when she sees him working hard to overcome obstacles that only someone with a jown in level of chakra capacity could undertake. Say Naruto, I never got to know much about you, except your skills as a shinobi. And you seem an interesting character, so you don't mind if I ask some questions about you, do you? Asked Yurgao, before seeing a smirk on his face, followed by a nod. After getting the authorization, the woman began bombarding the blonde with questions regarding many aspects, like his view of the village, his dreams for the future people he knew, including those he worshipped, and of course, those he wouldn't lift a finger to help. Naruto explained every question with details, going from how he adored Konoha and its sites from the Hokage Monument. He described about his favorite place and favorite activity, which was watching the sun setting down. He then explained what used to be his dream to which Yurgao offered her surprise since rarely a person ever dreamed about being the Hokage, before he explained that he didn't have that dream any longer. Which once again surprised the woman before she asked why. I just don't know what it takes to be a Hokage anymore and I don't even know if I'll have what it takes to be one as well. As we grow up, we slowly drift away from our childhood dreams. We kill, we cope with it and we move on. But our scars remains vivid within our minds until the day we're taken from this world. For instance you could tell that Idachi's dream was to kill his entire clan and become a member of the strongest organization in the elemental nations. My dream now is to be able to take the opportunities that lay before me and seize it the best way possible, explained Naruto, not even aware of the fact that the woman next to him was looking at his face as if the blonde didn't even exist it. Drea though, Heard everything and sighed in sadness since Naruto learned the harsh truth of the ninja world far too soon for his liking. But he said nothing as he continued walking just as he heard your Gao manifest. For you to speak like that, means that you've been through a harsh experience as a shinobi care to enlighten me. I mean if it not personal and everything asked your Gao, before seeing the blonde negating with his head and explain about what happened on the day he and a couple of his peers tried bringing a Chiha Sasuke back. Yorgao then heard about how eager the Achiha, as Naruto often called him, was to obtain power going as far as betraying the village by joining with Orochimaru. As she heard everything, she couldn't help but flinch at the notion of being hit dead on by Kakashi's signature technique the Kudori right on the chest. She was wondering how the hell Naruto was still alive, but she remembered the fox inside his stomach and figured it had something to do with it. In the end, Sasuke left me to die and if it wasn't for Kakashi sensei helping me, I'd be dead long time ago. Since then, I decided that a major change in my life was a do. Improving on areas I failed at the academy was the first step. Said Naruto as he continued talking while Yurgao just listened intently, while absorbing everything about Naruto's life. She smiled when the blonde explained to her about his idol being the Sand Dime and the Yon Dime Hokage, explaining how much he wanted to be in the same level of skills in the future. She didn't need to hear about the person the blonde loathed, since it was pretty clear from what happened at the mission to retrieve Sasuke. All in all though, even if she never once heard he speak the fox's name, she was fairly certain that the blonde went through a lot ever since he graduated at the academy. Obviously, there were other less fortunate than him in the shinobi regard, like those born in the midst of war, but Naruto managed to gather a great deal of experience. Say your Gao san Said Naruto, earning the woman's attention before the blonde started the conversation once more. While growing up, I managed to figure that Shinobis in general has different ways to cope with their pain of loss, and I was wondering if Kakashi Sensei when he was at the Anbu arrived late for his meetings. When we started as Genins, I always thought he did it just to piss us off, but one time I saw him staring at that rock that contained the name of the Shinobis that lost their lives in the line of duty, asked Naruto, earning a sad smile from the woman as she remembered her discussion with her ex ami captain the day of the Sandimes funeral. Flashback on. Music Hokage's funeral playing. Konoha was suffering from the heavy rain that fell right after the Sandimes funeral started. To almost everyone in the village, Saratobi Hiruzen was considered the soul bearer of the will of fire and because of his passing, even the sky was crying. Every shinobi in the village gathered in front of the administration building in order to offer their final gift to a man that managed to protect everyone until his last dying breath. 
On the other side of the village though, two elite shinobis were giving their prayers to long-lost comrades and dead fiancé Kakashi was with his hands on pockets as he stared at the monument that held the names of those that passed away while on a mission or defending the village from the enemy. Kakashi Senpai did you come here for a Bito san? Asked Yurgao as she saw him get up and walk away, while she approached and knelt on the ground in order to pray for her dead fiancé. Hurry up the Sandimes funeral is about to start said Kakashi as he turned and looked at the Hokage monument as Yurgao finished her praying and turned to address the silver-haired Jounin. You should stop making excuses for being late and come here earlier Kakashi Senpai, commented Yurgao as she got up and looked at the man while waiting for reply. I already have, but every time I come here, I just feel like beating my former self to the ground, said Kakashi before he started walking towards the place where the Sandimes funeral was being held. Flashback off. I cannot tell much about what happened to Senpai from fear of losing his trust in me. If you want to know about it, you can try to ask him about it. However, back in Anmu, he coped differently than nowadays. Kakashi became a legend in the Anmu forces, because he decided that going on death-like missions would take his attention away from what happened to him. On several occasions, he'd return from a mission covered in blood and bruises, explained Yurgao with a lost look on her face. But Naruto was oblivious to this whole ordeal as he processed the story. Sounds like he's been through a lot then. Thanks for explaining it to me your Gao san I guess a part of me always wanted to know about him. But I never pushed myself to ask him about it said Naruto as he looked further to Drea's back. Suddenly, the perverted stopped in his tracks, while waiting for Naruto and your Gao to stop next to him so that he could show the place where they would expend the rest of the trip. When Naruto and Yurgao appeared their eyes were plugged from their faces as they witnessed maybe the most beautiful scenery nature is able to produce. It consisted of a wide lake surrounded by a couple of mountains that were responsible for dividing an even bigger river rapid, thus creating a great ordeal of three amazing waterfalls. And try imagining similar scenery to Niagara Falls. The sheer pressure of the waterfall hitting the lowest river was enough to create a reverberating sound that would echo throughout the field, and Naruto was already gulping in anticipation from having to get near those waterfalls. Welcome to Water Country's Taki no Santasu Waterfall of the Three Paths. Its creation was due to seismic activities a long time ago. History showed that this scenery's creation never stopped changing since a long time ago, and even now is on the verge of changing. Naruto. This place is perfect for you to learn how to use Sutan Jutsu smiled Drea, until the blonde asked him why and he explained. I'll explain later, but by the end of our time here, you'll be able to reverse the current as it's required of a Sutan master. Once you become adamant on using Sutan Chakra, you'll proceed to reversing the river's current and maintain it for the duration of one minute. Mind you that this exercise is extremely difficult, and you'll only be attaining this because of your high chakra capacity. Any other genin or even shoyunin would be hard pressed to hold it for a couple of seconds before his or her chakra capacity would run dry. I bet even you your Gao San would have trouble reversing the current for one minute with my chakra. I managed to go up to three minutes smile Drea as he jumped from the mountain they were standing and fell on an open space near the river's margin before he proceeded to untie his belongings and set out their camp. Only after Naruto and Yurgao landed as well, did Drea start explaining something about the terrain. Well, of course water won't be an issue for us, but food will. This river is filled with salmon, however they're used to swimming against the current, and will be extremely hard to catch them. Also, hunting animals down these parts won't be an option, because as you can see there isn't much habitat down here, except for the salmons. Naruto. You'll be in charge of catching the salmons for us every day think of as endurance training order Drea, earning a frown in dismay from the blonde who was wondering how the hell does filling the pervert's stomach could help him train. Easy there brat, I'll explain my idea. When you're fishing for salmon, your body will be dragged by the current down the river. You can maintain your position, though, by applying chakra to your limbs and using them to stay put or even manage to swim against it when you're strong enough explained Drea before he saw the blonde give him a nod, albeit not so satisfactory. Seeing as the sun was setting Drea postponed Naruto's training for the next day, considering the fact that training in such a dangerous environment at night wasn't a very safe thing to do. Tampering with the lake's strong currents without supervision could hurt the blonde. So that left with the group leaving the camp in order to find some fruit for them to eat. 
A couple of apples and bananas were found, and they left with nothing but fruit for dinner, since neither Drea nor Yurgao felt like diving into the river to catch some salmon to which Naruto verbally protested, saying that when push comes to shove and he isn't in any shape to go fishing, then one of them would have to do the deed. Of course, Yurgao joked that she would offer him some chakra pills to replenish his health in order for him to go fishing, a motion seconded by Drea who, in turn, appreciated the woman's quick thinking. After dinner, the three set out two tents seeing that they now have a lady with them and sleeping together wasn't in your guys' plans, especially with the pervert around. Equals 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 the next day equals equals equals. After more fruit for breakfast, Drea, Naruto, and your gal went to walk on water in order to feel exactly what's like to balance themselves on top of the river rapids. Your gal and Drea didn't have much trouble because of their experience, but they could very well see that Naruto was focusing very hard to walk normally which was expected seeing as this was the first time Naruto ever had to walk on top of such strong currents before. After a while, the group stopped in the middle of the lake and Drea began to explain Naruto's training regimen from now on. Naruto, we have one year and a half to teach you how to handle Sutan ninjutsu. We also need to perfect your food and affinity, as well as your weapon fighting skills. Here's what you're going to do every day starting today. During the morning period, You'll be with your gal here sparring with her using weapons, the goal here is to be on pair with her skills by the end of this trip. Explained Rea, but was cut short when Naruto protested. Excuse me Aero sensei but what you mean being on pair with your gal's skills? She is the best kenjutsu user in Konoha and when we fight, I couldn't even see her moving correctly, much more managing to reach a level of elite jounin said Naruto, earning a smile and appraisal from the woman and a smirk from Drea but he proceeded nonetheless. That's exactly what I meant to Naruto. Of course skills of her caliber would take a while for you to reach, however you forgot that time doesn't apply to you the same way. We'll be training for one and a half years, which to you can go up to four year using only four cage bunshin. Surely, you understand this right Naruto, concluded Drea, before he continued with the training regimen. In the afternoon, you'll be mastering your foot and chakra, and we're going to practice it during fighting situations that will include both me and your gal here. Afterwards, you'll receive lessons regarding introduction to Sutan Chakra while getting adjusted to practicing on top of these troubled waters. In no time, you'll adapt and will proceed to fighting on the water, using not only weapons, but jutsus as well. By the time you manage to finish learning how to use Sutan Chakra, We'll move on to a couple of Sutan techniques I plan to teach you, of course followed by some offensive ones as well. Well, that's about it, any questions? Said Drea, before he saw Naruto negate with his head. This new method of training was insane, Naruto wondered. No matter, though, cause it would be just another of his achievements in the future. After the method was explained, the three went to shore, before getting out of the river. Drea then, stepped out of the way as Naruto and Yurgao picked up their respective weapons, so that the training could begin. Naruto, before we begin, I'll ask you to clear your mind out of any thoughts that could influence you in this fight. In order for you to let your instincts guide you, your mind will have to be clear, okay? Asked Yurgao, before she charged Naruto head-on with the intent to attack his sternum before Naruto managed to defend the strike by positioning his bow staff accordingly, but instead of only defending, he pushed the sword backwards with force intending to temper with Yurgao's equilibrium being unsuccessful however, since Yurgao absorbed the impact and managed to defend Naruto's quick strike on her chest. Upon seeing his attack flustered, Naruto positioned his bow staff on top of his shoulders, and began twirling straight at Yurgao, leaving her no alternative other than to jump back since a lone ninjato wouldn't be able to parry the attack. After stopping the attack, Naruto grabbed the end of the staff, and swing it vertically aiming for the girl's hand before Yurgao evaded the technique and landed a powerful kick to Naruto's abdomen sending him flying while holding his stomach as a pathetic attempt to stop the pain. After managing to land on his feet despite the pain, Naruto suddenly felt the need to kneel because of the pain in his stomach. He grudgingly got up as the pain eased a little bit before looking at Yurgao who was only waiting for him to return to the fight once more. Her fighting stance was already in position, never once underestimating Naruto, even though he was just an ant in comparison with her. Just by looking at her like that, Naruto respected her skills however, he had a goal to achieve and that meant being on pair with her in skills by the end of the training trip, so it was time to use some chakra to aid him. 
focusing some towards his legs. His speed was now doubled as he was right in front of her in seconds, thus surprising Yergao momentarily, before she adjusted to his speed and managed to parry his advance by positioning her foot right in between Naruto's legs, thus tempering with his balance, before she positioned her sword inches away from his jugular, leaving him no alternative other than yield. Using chakra was good and all, but speed itself is useless if you lack the skills to predict my movements. What you must learn Naruto is that different from Teijutsu, you have to remain some distance from your opponent. Because if not, he will do exactly as I did, except he won't have any interest in keeping you alive understood. Asked Yurgao, earning a nod from Naruto, before they started the spar once more. Equals 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 at the end of the second year equals equals equals. With time their fights improved in quality and Naruto was able to parry Yurga's movements a lot better, even managing to catch her by surprise from time to time. Regarding Fudin Ninjutsu, Drea had to give it to the blonde in just about every jutsu he used against the blonde. Naruto had a counter for him by dodging fairly quickly and then doing hand seals with enough speed that before Drea even finished his jutsu, Naruto would already send either a wind sword jutsu at him or a wind gale palm jutsu, being the fastest ones available in his arsenal. The blonde even managed to create a new technique that is even faster and similar to the Katan House and no Jutsu. By focusing Fudin Chakra to his lungs in intervals, Naruto learned that he could expel wind shots from his mouth. Andrea had to use a very powerful Dotan defense so as not to be pierced by the blonde's technique, which was called Fudin Case Tamam, Wind Release, Wind Shot Jutsu. His stamina also improved by so many times wrestling against the strong currents as well as catching the fast swimming salmons to which Naruto cursed their very existence from not even bothering the fast currents. One time, after he went out of the water with a bucket of salmons, he could have swore that your gal looked at him as in checking him from head to toe with a faint blush on her face. Whether she was this way from being tired after their sparring sessions or not, the boy was oblivious. The truth though, was that indeed your gal was having perverted thoughts, but she chose to keep it for herself. During their time together, the woman felt at ease with the blonde, often talking to him on various occasions, and even sharing a couple of funny stories together. She also had the decency to respect Naruto's hard work to learn every bit of the tips she gave him regarding weapon fighting as well as every bit of information regarding Sutan Chakra, which in three months, practicing, and the blonde already managed to create little whirlpools on the water. She was fairly confident that by the end of the training, Naruto would be well versed at the subject. Nevertheless, even with the interaction with him, one thing still didn't change since she left Konoha. The nightmares, although less constant, were still there and when they came, she just couldn't sleep afterwards. She would then get up and look at the waterfall in front of her, wondering about how much her life changed because of what happened. Before the invasion, she was the skilled Amiku Noichi and future wife of Jeku Hayate now though. She's nothing but an empty shell of her former self. Closing her eyes, she remembered how it was to feel his touch once more to hear his never-ending coughs, which were a way he found for enemies to underestimate him from thinking he was sick. She, then opened her eyes to look at the waterfall some more, before sighing in dismay at what happened with her. However, when she turned and went back to sleep, she suddenly lost her ability to breathe. Her eyes were as wide as saucers for what she was seeing in front of her. Right next to a sleeping Naruto, a Jounin appeared wearing a bandana, and the all too familiar sword passed from generations of the Jeku clan strapped to his belt. He was looking straight to Naruto for a while, before the man turned to his beloved wife. It's good to see you Yu Chan, greeted Hayate, before he saw Yurgao flinch by the sudden heartache she was feeling at the moment. In her dreams, she always wanted to talk to him at least one more time to say how sorry she was from not arriving at the place earlier, thus preventing his death. Hey. 8. Hayate Kun Hao. You're dead. I. Saw you myself, she tried to speak, but it was very difficult considering the circumstances. I'm indeed dead Yu Chan however that doesn't mean I can't talk to you right? After all, it's not every day I'm granted the opportunity to speak with you, said Hayate, before he looked back to Naruto in contemplation. Yurgao was finding strange that Hayate would do that, but seeing her dead fiancé once more was all that mattered right now. I remember him from the Shoyunin exams, I proctored. He was quite adamant on winning against the Inuzuka that, even though he was beaten severely, he never admitted defeat and managed to win the battle in the end. He may be young but I can see a lot of willpower in him. 
Sandime thinks he possessed the will of fire he speaks so much about, and I can very well see great things for him in the future, wouldn't you agree your Gao Chan, asked Hayate. What do you mean? asked your Gao, but was interrupted by her fiancé, as he explained. You've been spending a lot of time with him these days. I know that because I never stopped watching you from above. I could see how proud you were when he managed to deliver a solid blow with his bow staff, and I even saw how you're looking at him when he got out of the river, even though I admit, I was kind of jealous from above laughed Hayate before seeing your gas flustered look. It's been a long time since my death your Gao Chan. You can't just keep doing this to yourself, endless nightmares. Thoughts of regret from thinking that you could have prevented everything from happening. You deserve to move on with your life, you deserve to be happy advised Hayate, before he once more looked at Naruto, as in giving the hint to the woman. However, before she could ask the man why he was talking about this, she noticed that his spirit began to fade before he was completely gone from the world, but his message managed to echo once more. Move on with your life your Gao Chan, I'll be up there protecting you. Hayate. No come back please. I want to talk to you some more. Hayate. Screamed your Gao not even aware of the fact that she was dreaming about everything. Hearing the constant screaming, Naruto decided to check what was happening and he approached your Gao's tent and heard she screaming the name Hayate over and over. He then decided to wake her up in order to wake up from a possible nightmare. Your Gao wake up. Wake up your Gao, said Naruto as he placed his hands on her shoulder before sharing her. The woman suddenly opened her eyes before the first thing she noticed was Naruto, and that she was inside her tent the whole time. Naruto, what happened? Why did you wake me up? Asked your Gao as she sits from her position while scratching her eyes. You were screaming the whole time about Hayate, I thought you were having a nightmare I'm sorry said Naruto, before your Gao dismissed the need of apologies, before getting up from her tent and walking outside, still wondering if she was dreaming or not. However, since she was able to feel Naruto's hands on her shoulders and the wind adjourning her features, her question was answered. The dream was so real, though, she wondered. Her heart was in pain the whole time as her conversation with her dead fiancé progressed. In the end, though, she didn't know if what happened was real or just an effect of her subconscious playing tricks with her mind. She was wondering about her dream so much that she even forgot who was standing behind her. There was no awkward moment, because no one ever threw their clothes off in order to sleep hence why Naruto was in regular black paints and dark grey shirt and Yurgao was with the black anu paints and her fishnet shirt. Yurgao san, I didn't mean to wake you up, it's just. Said Naruto trying to apologize, but he stopped once she turned to address Naruto. You don't need to apologize Naruto, really. I was indeed having a nightmare of sorts. Explained your Gao thus easing Naruto's anxiety of ruining a person's beauty sleep. Silence, then ruled their brief conversation as the woman started contemplating the sky to see if what she dreamed about was real or not. Naruto for his part, knew something was wrong the minute he looked at her face, or rather her long lost look. She, then turned and walked straight for her tent as she passed Naruto without saying anything. In the dream Hayate would look at her while saying she needed to move on with her life, but surely he couldn't be meaning what she thought he was sure Naruto was a nice person devoted to his life as a shinobi, and also good company for conversations. She even remembered the blonde's physical attributes as very attractive. However, she couldn't even picture her together with him, the same way she was with Hayate. If you want to talk about it, I'm all ears advised Naruto, thus earning her attention. Thanks Naruto, but is nothing really. It was just a nightmare after all. I'll go to sleep, good night, greeted your Gao, not even wanting to dwell on the subject of trusting the boy that much as she slowly walked towards her tent. I know that look on your face, your Gao san. He started talking well aware that she was listening every word of it since she stopped dead on her tracks. That look of pain from what happened in the past, constantly shout to the heavens as to why it had to happen with you of all people and the constant feeling of regret you develop afterward convincing you that it's your entire fault for what happened even though you couldn't ever predict the results. Yeah, I know that look very well, explained Naruto as he looked at the waterfall, not even aware that the very woman he was addressing to was looking straight at his back with wide eyes. You got that just by looking at my eyes? Asked your Gao still shocked that the blonde just now described everything she was feeling. Not only that, 
but also hearing you in your sleep this entire time. I felt like asking you about it, but I never meant to pry, so I kept my mouth shut about this. Also, when we're sparring, sometimes I had to use chakra to be able to block your fierce attacks, which carried more strength than finesse. I always figured that just like everyone, you two had your own bad story to cope with, explained Naruto, earning a nod from your gao as she had the decency to look down in sadness. She really considered bottling up these emotions and hoped to get pasted this on her own from fear of being misunderstood by her peers, who in turn, also had their respective bad stories, and supposedly managed to get pasted it. However, for some strange reason, she thought she could actually trust the blonde not to judge her, and thus she decided to open the barrier she kept up for so long. Why don't we go closer to the river so we can talk, advised your gal, earning a nod from Naruto as he followed the woman until she took a seat two inches from the margin and started talking. It happened the day before the sand sound invasion on our village as my team happened to be the ones responsible for performing some routes throughout the Kanaha's urban territory. Nothing out of ordinary happened as per usual and our team was about to end the shift when the sun was up the next day however one of my teammates found a dead shinobi on top of a roof carrying a fatal wound from a futon technique explained your as fresh tears began to fall from her eyes, but she continued nonetheless. Turned out that the shinobi was none other than my fiancé Jeku Hayate, said your as she burst into tears, while Naruto stood there shocked. He remembered the guy from that hosted the second part of the Shoyunin exams and wondered at the time why he wasn't present for the third part, instead he was replaced by a man named Shurinui Genma. Looking at the woman crying her hearts out, Naruto immediately let go of his wondering and embraced the woman in a tight hug as she let every tear from her eyes and every air from her lungs on Naruto's strangely comforting chest. She screamed at her fiancé for leaving her, she screamed at the bastard who killed him, she screamed at Kami for doing this to her, taking away Hayate from her life. Naruto, meanwhile was caressing her hair gently while expressing some kind words for your gal. His intention was immediately resumed to being there for the woman in hopes of curing her from her depression. The blonde felt your gal tightening the embrace as to receive more comfort only for Naruto to understand the hint and bring her head even closer to his body as he continued to caress her hair. Some minutes later, the woman's tears were beginning to subside, and she stopped screaming, probably because her vocal cords were beginning to hurt. At least that was what Naruto thought. Your gal, however, was just feeling comfortable right there on Naruto's chest. It wasn't long until your gal closed her eyes right there and then. Naruto, seeing this, smiled and closed his as well, sleeping with his head on top of hers. When the sun appeared, your gal woke up after, strangely, one of the best sleeps she had in years and looked up to see Naruto there as well with her the entire time. She then, backed away from him a little bit while never once stopping to look at his cerulean blue orbs, and that big comforting smile of his. Feeling better yo Dao? Asked Naruto, before he saw the woman nod with her head. Words didn't need to be exchanged between them now, both would get their answers just by looking at each other. Both of them heard Drea giggling like a maniac, the man witnessed everything of course as he was well versed in espionage and Naruto and your gal both knew that the pervert would definitely put them together on his book in the future if the frantic scribbling was any indication. It didn't matter though, as both of them as your gal felt like a weight the equivalent of a ton of bricks was lifted from her shoulder and Naruto was just at ease by helping the woman be at ease. Chapter 9 Homecoming Konoha was most of the time blessed by warm weather which allowed the villagers to always wear light clothes and even allowed a nice time at the lakes. The villagers were having their normal routines, merchants selling their products. Friends joining together for food and drinks, girls talking about boys and shopping. Guys discussing about martial arts and well girls. It was as normal as any other place, however that all was ruined by what appeared to be a little kid with a blue scarf around his neck chasing after a black cat while causing havoc amongst town. This was the second time he was chasing the damn cat, and he swore the damn animal would be skinned alive when he caught it. His team was following from the roof with the intention of catching the cat up front, but Kanahamara reasoned that they didn't want to get their hands dirty, leaving the work all for him. Suddenly, the cat entered in a darkened alley before stopping, because of the huge wall that prohibited him from escaping from his pursuer. It, then snarled in a pathetic attempt to scare the two approaching genins away, but it was unsuccessful. 
The little girl with the funny hair pressed the intercom button and communicated that the target was trapped. Hearing this, Kanahamari suddenly jumped from the other side of the wall, before landing graciously on top of the trapped animal, thus capturing his prey. Or so he thought. The animal fought with all his might to hurt the Sandime's grandson in the worst way possible, but the little guy wouldn't budge. After a while, Kanahamaru managed to lock Tora in with his arm, while smiling at finally being able to capture the damn feline. He was smiling like crazy however the cat managed to free his claws and lashed them at Kanahamaru's face with enough fury that caused the little guy to scream from pain. Equals 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 at the mission room equals equals equals. Seeing the cat Tora being squeezed like a toy by its owner, the Genin team couldn't help but feel bad for the little animal. They, like every Genin in Konoha, knew why it escaped a lot. After the feudal lord's wife left the premises embassy, the teams Jown and Sensei lashed out at their bad skills for taking too long to chase the cat, meaning more training for them. Mogi, though, protested. But Sensei, that cat was difficult to trace, he seems pretty used to escaping. I won't hear it, this only proves that you three lack the skills to perform this mission properly, Ebisi scowled. Kanahamari, though, took an indignant sit on the ground before protesting that he couldn't show his real skills in these lame missions, which made a Minoruka who was sitting next to the Hokage, explaining that about ninja ranks and mission ranks, which was later seconded by the Hokage, who voiced that only deranked mission for now. Obviously, though, Kanahamaru protested. I can't keep doing these lame missions after all, I will become the Nanadime 7th Hokage. Huh. And who will be the Rokudime Hokage if I may ask? Asked Sinead, clearly interested in what the little guy had to say. Who else? Naruto Nichin will be Rokudime. Ebisu, Urka, and Sinead were surprised to hear this since it's been three years since the blonde left with Drea of the Sanin. Equals 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 at the Hokage's office equals equals equals. As Sinead, Urka, and now Shizun looked at the Genin team leaving the administration building, they couldn't help but imagine the blonde. It's been three years since he left for real training with Drea Sama, I wonder when he will be back. Urka asked. Sinead remained silent for a while wondering about the blonde. Looking at Kanahamaru now, she could have swore she saw the same blonde brat annoying the hell out of her, but she remembered that after the traitorous ordeal three years prior, she knew that the blonde was now different than the exuberant demeanor he always carried within him. She just hoped beyond hope that Naruto was able to maintain his innocence a bit longer, or else Sinead feared that what made the blonde's personality would soon vanish. He's scheduled to be back today, I believe. Dot we need him here though. I feel that some drastic changes will occur soon. Sinead said. Equals 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 west gate equals equals equals. Leaving the forest path, three shadows approached the village they left behind for so long. Well, at least Naruto and Drea more than Yurgao did. But all of them spent quite a lot of time away from the village. Their clothes remained almost the same, with Naruto being the only one who added another piece. On top of his dark gray shirt, he was now wearing a customized black vest with a red spiral on his back, just like a Jounin style vest, but entirely black. As they entered the village, nostalgia hit both Naruto and Yurgao like wildfire, but whereas you would think Hayate's memories would bombard the woman the second she stepped into the village, instead, all she thought was how much she missed her peers at the Anbu, and of course, those who graduated with her at the academy. It has been three years. Naruto was looking around the village as both Drea and Yurgao looked at him with a smile on their faces. Both of them knew how much Naruto loved Konoha and its sights. The woman, though, lost her smile and looked at Drea. Drea-sama now that I returned, I must present myself at Anbu headquarters, could you tell Hokage-sama this for me? The perverted only nodded, before he saw that Naruto and Yurgao were crossing eyes with each other. I'll see you around Naruto. Maybe get together sometime for lunch. I'd like that very much your Gao Chan, you can take me to that sushi place you're talking about, say tonight at 8. The woman smiled once more, before vanishing within a swirl of leaves, but the message was already delivered. Drea could only smile as he saw his precious student's interaction with your Gao. Ever since these two bonded back at the waterfall place, their relationship only improved with time up to the point of even going out six months ago to a village near the capital of water country. 
The pervert was still due to convincing Naruto to tell him how that night went. What the pervert didn't know, and probably was dying from curiosity, was that the night that they went out was the first time they hooked up with one another. The blonde would still daydream about how it was to kiss the gorgeous Kunoichi and the fact that Yurgao was smiling the entire time, something clicked that time inside Naruto, and he couldn't help but smile in response. How many times do I have to ask for you to tell me what happened that night, Naruto? I want to know please. How many times do I have to say to you Aero sensei that's mine and your Gao chan's privacy? Dear Kami, Sometimes I wonder if you're asking this, so that you can use us as characters for your next book. Drea had the decency to snort at the blonde from being caught. His new book Ika Ika Makeout Tactics was indeed developed by watching Naruto and Yurgao interact with one another. Drea was just thankful that Naruto didn't read his book, otherwise the wise ass would figure it out instantly and... Well he didn't want to think about getting the blonde angry, not if Yurgao happens to join his side after knowing as well. The subject was dropped as they entered the administration building, all keen on talking to Tsunaid as soon as possible. Equals 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 at the Hokage's office equals equals equals. Tsunade was now alone in her office when a sudden knock was heard. Giving it no mind, she authorized entrance before the door opened. It took only a glimpse of blonde hair entering her office to realize just who was at the door. She took a moment to seize him up from head to toe, and she was surprised at how much bigger he was now. He was easily her height if not more. Also, he changed his clothes drastically Tsunade reasoned. She happened to like it in fact, and couldn't help but wonder what happened to change his mind about getting rid of those hideous orange clothes. She was by his side in a minute, before enveloping the young man in a fierce hug, which much to her surprise, was returned as she felt Naruto's arms around her. I missed you Tsunade back in. Dada sorry about the name calling, I guess some old habits don't change. Eef. Missed you too brat, and I do care about the name, so stop calling me that okay. I can tell you've changed a lot. I'm really glad to see you again Sinead said with a smile on her face as she looked at the younger blonde. Now that the sentimental reunion was over Sinead went back to her desk and returned to the Hokage position before addressing the two once more. So, I see you managed to improve after all. Huh, you're expecting us not to bring any results? You insult my teaching skills Suhai mumbled Drea, earning a smile from the Hokage, before she heard the door knocking once more. Excuse me Sinead Sama, but Shizun. Was. Naruto, your back Sakura shouted as she fastened the steps to face the new blonde before her and just like Sinead. She was admiring every bit of this new Naruto, not in the same way though, as Sinead was more of a motherly manner and Sakura was. Well. Moving on. Sakura is been a while. How are you doing? Asked Naruto. Meanwhile, Tsunade and Drea were exchanging some words while looking at the teammates reuniting once more. Drea explained about Yurgao going to Anu headquarters and a little summary of Naruto's training trip, including some aspects of Naruto and Yurgao's interaction that shocked Tsunade, but her eyes returned to normal. Surely, Naruto would be able to heal the woman's depression but she didn't know this relationship would actually be a romantic relationship. After a while, talking Naruto heard from Tsunade that he was to be tested right away. Okay, but how do you want me to show my skills? Naruto asked, before Tsunade pointed to the furthest window of the room. The blonde, then opened the window and looked outside for a while, before he spotted his opponent reading that smug book before greeting the blonde. You got taller Naruto, that's for sure. I trust that your training has honed your skills as you desired. As Kakashi entered the room, he saw also Sakura. You two will be my opponent. Kakashi said. I want to see how you two will fare against someone of Kakashi's skills. Sakura show me you haven't been slacking in your training. The fight will occur at training ground and 7 in exactly 4 hours. Both me and Drea will be there as well to supervise. And Naruto. Depending on the skills you show, there will be a reward for you. Nobody in the room, except for Drea, knew Naruto to look at Sinead with suspicion and skepticism. Sakura was only waiting for the blonde to scream to the heavens about whatever the reward is and challenge Kakashi that he would win for sure. But instead, 
He just looked at the Hokage with his eyes unmoving and a simple smile on his face. Could we perhaps do it now? I kind of have a date with someone and she's kind of hard to find if I were to cancel it. Sakura was shocked instantly. Naruto on a date, but he just arrived, how could that be? Kakashi was also shocked at this information, since he was having the same thoughts as Sakura. However, one thing occurred to him. He heard that one of his old Anu subordinates Uzuti Yurgao joined Naruto and Drea on their travels. But the woman was so fixed on avenging Hayate. No it couldn't be possible. Hopefully, Drea solved the entire situation. Don't worry Naruto, I'll find her and explain the situation. I'm sure she'll be delighted to see the display said Drea, before he vanished within a swirl of leaves leaving Naruto with a smile as he left the room with the promise of meeting them on training ground 7. Sakura was gawking like a fish and so was Kakashi, but Sinead couldn't help but smile at the blonde's actions. Well, since that's already out of the way, why don't you two scram out of my office because I got work to do. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. After leaving the office, Naruto chose to wander around town for a while, as in getting once again adjusted to the sights. Apart from the inclusion of Sinead's head at the Hokage Monument, nothing much has changed he reasoned as he passed through the academy and a couple of restaurants and stores that he remembered three years ago. People would wander around chatting happily with friends, lovers, family. Suddenly, he heard Sakura shouting for him to wait, getting his attention, thus stopping in the middle of the street. Hey Sakura, what's up? The girl took a while to recover from so much running, apparently from chasing Naruto all the way from the administration building. Naruto. I wanted to catch up with you. You leave for three years and then come back. I want to know what happened. How was it? It was great. Drea Sensei taught me lots of great stuff. I managed to perfect some flaws about my before skills and even managed to add quite a few extra. Actually, I plan to show them in our match against Kakashi Sensei. What about you, though? I'd be wrong to presume you're a Shoyunin now. Sakura looked at the blonde strangely as he was talking. Naruto was just so much different now that she felt like she didn't know him at all. The strange level of confidence, the calm talking, expressing different words than Ramen and Hokage. Yeah, I managed to pass last year in Takagakure. Both I and Shino managed to pass but the others managed at the following exams. Now, out of our academy friends, only you aren't a shoyunin yet, Naruto. Neji recently got promoted to Jounin, and it's doing a lot of missions with Gai Sensei and Kakashi Sensei. Sakura thought the blonde would be shouting mad at the news of being the last one, but instead, he just kept that smile of his as he continued walking presumably to his apartment. That's nice, Neji is a talented shinobi, I'm sure it was only a matter of time until his talent was noticed by the Hokage. Now, I guess I have to pass the next one and become a shoyunin just like all you guys. Hopefully, I could, perhaps, surpass Neji and become a jounin as well in the future. Now, I wonder what happened to my apartments since I was gone. After I left, I forgot to ask someone to take care of it for me, so I wonder what a mess it must be right now. Wanna help me clean? Asked Naruto. The girl nodded, before they went up the stairs, and stopped once they reached his floor. When the door was opened, no one was prepared for the sudden wave of dust to fill their lungs, making both shinobis cough instantly. Cough. Cough. Wait right here Sakura, I'll get inside and open the window, man I can't see a thing inside. After he entered, Sakura lost sight of him and wondered if she should have checked his apartment every once in a while. It wasn't until the dust cloud started to vanish that the blonde shouted for her to enter. As she got inside, she looked at the window that Naruto mentioned and thanked the heavens for the sudden air entrance that filled the room, cleaning their lungs a bit. Needless to say, the place was a freaking mess. Some clothes tossed on the floor, old ramen cups piled next to the only garbage can which clearly wasn't emptied if the stinking smell was any indication. Okay. I almost feel like hiring a genin team to clean this place, it's a mess in here. Well, let's clean right. Dot cage bunch in no jutsu. Instantly, four doppelgangers appeared next to Naruto, and then all five of them started cleaning each doing a specific task, thus not needing Sakura's help in the end. 
The original one gathered his old orange jumpsuits in order to burn them all. Since he already had a change in wardrobe, one of the clones was responsible for gathering the litter on the ground and throwing in a big garbage disposal located on the building's first floor. Two clones wiped the dust off the wooden floor and some accumulated at the walls. The window needed some cleaning as well, so the fourth clone was in charge of that. In little to no time Naruto's place was already clean and the real Naruto dispelled the clones, while clapping his hands signifying the job done. Sakura though, just kept watching the clones do all the work and was amazed at the time needed to clean everything and she actually noticed that no spot was left unchecked by the blonde, which was surprising considering that Naruto was after all a boy and as such a boy wouldn't be able to clean at certain spots. Well, now we can be here without risk of coughing to death. So, how was your training this last three years? Asked Naruto, getting the pink-haired girl's attention. It was great as well, Sanate Sama and Shizun Senpai are very strict, and in little to no time, the results were already showing up. I managed to learn some medical ninjutsu under their wing and even got to help them at the hospital taking care of some patients, although Sanate Sama is still due to allow me on the more sensitive procedures. I even got some classes in poisons and antidotes from both Shizun Senpai and Anko Senpai. One piece of advice, though, Anko Senpai is stricter than Shizun and Sanate Sama combined. I mean she literally tossed me on the ground several times, until I learned them. In the end though, it was for the better as I intend to create antidote for every poison in existence at the elemental nations in the future. How about you? Tanate Sama told me Drea Sama is a master of ninjutsu and even the art of fuinjutsu, though I don't know much more than the usual ceiling scrolls. Naruto kept hearing everything and smiling through the whole thing. He was wondering about Sakura's sudden change in behavior from that usual short temper of hers when the blonde acted stupid in front of her. Truth to be told Naruto was wondering if his teammate acted that way because of the things he would do in order to get attention, because now that they were talking like equals, she was much calmer than before, which was strange. Drea Sensei was also strict as hell. We did some training with the racing gan that would send me to unconsciousness almost every day. We sparred almost every day as well, and the man helped me in correcting a lot of my flaws regarding Teijutsu and weapon throwing. I'll tell you boosting of confidence aside, I thought I had it all once I graduated and became a genin, but after what happened, it showed me that my skills were nothing compared to what it should have been. Luckily, I managed to see them now, right? Also, we used to travel a lot and Drea took me to see some great sights around the elemental nations. There is this place in water country called Taki no Sampasu Waterfall of the Three Paths, and it's very beautiful. We happened to train there for a long time, so that I could get adjusted to strong water currents, while sparring with him. These last three years were very good, indeed, Sakura. As the conversation continued, Sakura definitely stopped thinking about the differences between this Naruto, and the one she came to know. To her, it was like seeing two distinguished personalities whose comparison was just not possible. So, she settled for knowing this new Naruto and go on from there. It wasn't until Sakura mentioned Sasuke's name that Naruto's usually relaxed expression suddenly changed, and the girl noticed instantly. In fact, she was rather uncomfortable in discussing the Achiha manner with Naruto, because of what the blonde told her three years ago, but the fact remained that Sasuke was a part of Team 7 and Sakura wanted the team to be reunited once more, regardless of her feelings for the raven-haired boy. Naruto for his part, though about lashing out at Sakura for trusting someone who didn't think twice about betraying the so-called Team 7, but between doing this and risk crushing her heart, the blonde chose to be stoic about the subject. Sakura, you already know my position in this manner, so it's better for us if we place a mute point in all this. I can see that you're eager to bring him back, and although I don't agree with you, I'll respect it seeing as you are a teammate and a friend. I only hope that he doesn't do to you what he did to me. Sakura didn't need to ask what Sasuke did to Naruto at the time, since it was pretty obvious, by remembering Naruto at the hospital three years ago. However, she was surprised with Naruto's strange and somewhat mature answer to an obvious emotional concern. I can see this trip did well to you Naruto, you're definitely more matured than when you left. We better go to the training ground, because it's almost time, and I don't think Kakashi Sensei will be late this time. After the blonde offered a nod, they left the premise and went to the training ground. 
equals 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 with your doubt equals equals equals. Right after presenting once more at the Anbu HQ, Yo Gao was surprised that her captain Ten Zhao released her from presenting for duty the first day. Getting some spars with Naruto was alright and kept her from rotting her skills, but she missed the constant rush of Anbu level missions. Now, though, she was with nothing to do until the blonde came by and took her to their date at the sushi place. To this time, she still was a little lost concerning this rather odd relationship. It all began with Hyatt's message from the beyond saying that she'd have to move on and the hidden message that the blonde would be a valuable partner. The truth was that after a few dates and conversations throughout the trip, Naruto proved himself time and time again that he was more than a 15-year-old genin. His opinions were rather mature for his age, she reasoned and surprisingly, he managed to keep a certain level of conversation that your Gao is used to have with her peers. A sudden memory appeared full force in her mind about a special day when he invited her to go the water country's capital city as his date and it made her blush madly. They didn't do anything out of the ordinary apart from making out severely. At the time, a sudden desire of flesh appeared in both of them which made Naruto pay the bill sooner than expected, before they rented a hotel room to be together. Just the feel of the blonde's toned body at the time managed to send shivers to her body. However, what could have been a perfect night, ended up being cut short because both she and Naruto sensed some strange activity happening and opted to flee the site from fear that Akatsuki was behind all this, but the thought was forever kept in her mind. As she wandered around town, her eyes caught sight of her role model, or rather what he used to be when a part of the Anba Corps. Hitake Kakashi was by all means a legend of the shinobi world, as the copycat ninja Kakashi no Sharingan. Although that book he was reading managed to low his reputation around the village, not that the man cared though, as several people already told him to stop, and he paid it no mind. Greetings senpai, it's been a long time since we last met. Instantly, Kakashi stopped his attention from the book and looked at his former Andu subordinate before greeting her with the usual yo. Your Gao san indeed it's been a while, how are you doing? The greeting was okay and all, but your Gao could very ascertain when someone was coming with bullshit talk with her, before saying what they really want, so it was fair to say that she preferred that the man would stop doing this and go directly to the point. Kakashi Senpai, I know you too much for you to just greet me and ask how I am doing. You chose to meet me here, because you were aware this is the path out of the headquarters. What is it that you want? Asked your Gao, showing no sights of being amused at Kakashi's stoic personality. Straight to the point, as always. I was hoping to see if we could discuss about a certain blonde that from what I hear has been common knowledge between you and me. Your gal looked at the man in front of her incredulously. Kakashi never bothered about others' personal lives, seeing as his personal life wasn't that remarkable in the first place. When she was with Hayate, the man wouldn't even lift an eyebrow in surprise after the announcement of their engagement. Nevertheless, Figuring out what he wanted to talk about Naruto was better than assuming that he knows about the fact that they were dating. Naruto. What about him? I'm already aware of the fact that you traveled with him and Dreyasama for one and a half years and when he came back, he mentioned that he couldn't take too long for an exercise to show the results of his training because he had a date with someone. Now, I know that the blonde is growing up and maybe attracts some attention of the female population but even then, I don't consider him fast enough to arrange a date just after arriving. Kakashi Senpai seriously. Your Gao didn't know what to say to the man who considered himself responsible for the blonde just because the man was his Jounin sensei three long years ago, and why would he care anyway? Your Gao heard the word someone and smiled slightly at the crafty blonde from keeping everyone at a loss on who would the date, but Kakashi linked the dots pretty easily. It didn't matter though. So, you're really quick in assume that because of what he said, I'd be his date, because of the time we spent together. Seriously Kakashi Senpai, what if Naruto met with a Kunoichi from the village when she was on a mission or something? You have yet to deny your involvement in this manner, Yogao, asked Kakashi, already sure of the answer, but also because the woman never lost that smile of his, like telling the man it was not of his business who she should date and why. You're right, I'm not denying. Indeed Naruto and I are dating, so what's the problem? Kakashi's intention at first was to give the girl some heads up about dating someone younger than her and Naruto of all people. However, just like Sakura, 
Kakashi was under the impression that the boy was just as he was before he left, immature and loud. Yordao, for instance, was already aware of Naruto's underestimation by his colleagues in thinking that he was a no-good loudmouth and rash-thinking individual. Oh man, he thinks he knows Naruto. If you're thinking about the blonde's previous behavior, then you of all people should be aware of his intentions at the time to act like he did. After all, aren't you the creator of the phrase look underneath the underneath? Kakashi's sudden serious visage told her that maybe Kakashi misinterpreted Naruto's act of ignorance towards his surroundings, so she settled herself to explain better from the man who until now thought he knew about his student's life. Seeking attention was everything he carved for, seeing as people either ignored him or sent hateful glares because of what he carries within him. For instance, Kakashi Senpai, would you consider him the same Naruto you know after he asked you about his skills as a shinobi three years ago? If he was anything like you portrayed him out to be despite getting beat constantly, he would continue with the same reckless thought over and over again, thus getting killed in the process. You met the real him, albeit briefly, one day prior to his trip with Drea. Now, seeing him today could you compare him with the one you knew? Kakashi concurred with everything the woman told, although he didn't show it. It was true that Kakashi was misinformed of the blonde's presumably cheerful demeanor, never once displaying a hint of sadness or seriousness in his tone of voice. The man had the decency to sigh in dismay at the sudden revelations. Ha. Huh. I guess you're right, although I have yet to see this new Naruto you portray him out to be in the midst of battle and only then will I know that he changed for good, which in fact will occur at exactly 15 minutes from now at training ground number 7, he invited you to come watch, since it will get in the way of your date. I'll be there in 15 minutes. I just have to change my clothes and put my Andy uniform. You and only you have knowledge of our relationship senpai and for now, I and Naruto agree that is to remain this way, see you there. After saying Yodao vanished within a shunshin, thus leaving Kakashi alone thinking about the blonde enigma, and how different could his fighting skills be. Equals 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 at training ground number 7 equals equals equals. The sun was about to set as Kakashi, Sakura, and Naruto looked at each other prior to the battle that was about to occur. Near a tree were Shizun and Sinead looking at them from afar with Drea sitting on top of a tree branch with a lone Andy member standing on top of said tree branch. To the untrained eye Naruto was focusing his sight entirely on Kakashi, but his eyes were more inclined to see both Kakashi and Yurgao whose position was exactly passing Kakashi's right shoulder at the moment. As in being nostalgic, Kakashi suddenly pulled two bells from his pocket, before explaining the rules. As you can see, it will be bell test all over again, same objective, same rules. I trust that you now will understand when I say that you have to come at me as if you were after my head and seeing as I have a feeling you two are not to be taken lightly, I will use the sharing gan this time. Both paid quick attention at the mission objectives, while Kakashi strapped the bells on his waist, before placing one hands on his pocket while observing his opponents. The fight already started, but no side made a move so far. Suddenly, both Naruto and Sakura threw some projectiles towards their sensei who in turn, jumped by instinct before taking two kunais since his Sharingan already envisioned the next move. Another barrage of projectiles was thrown at the silver-haired sensei, who in turn, managed to deflect with his kunais before he threw them towards Naruto and Sakura. Out of the blue, the man started a quick series of hand seals before the two kunais transformed to ten projectiles, forcing both Sakura and Naruto to evade the barrage, Sakura evading from the left, and Naruto doing some backflips. After evading Naruto and Sakura charged the descending Kakashi from both flanks, being Sakura the one who aimed the first punch, however Kakashi's Sharingan advised him to evade the punch from so much chakra being focused. As the punch passed through, the wave of chakra actually managed to hit the tree, and Kakashi wondered what exactly the Hokage taught her. However he didn't have time to wonder as Naruto came by with a reverse kick aiming his left stomach, forcing Kakashi to use his arm to defend, which was surprising considering that the kick wasn't a wasted move. The silver-haired shinobi used brute strength to throw Naruto away from him before he aimed a strong kick at Sakura, but the girl was already far out of range, before she threw a couple of shurikens at his blind side. Focusing Chakra to his legs, Kakashi managed to jump in time, before landing on a tree top as he looked at his students. Their Teijutsu was already high Shayunin material, which caused the man to smirk with a sudden feeling of pride, but then he realized that it wasn't him who taught them, so he chooses to focus at the task at hand. Suddenly Kakashi vanished from sight, 
leaving Naruto and Sakura in the middle of the field, looking around to spot the surprise attack that would surely follow. Sakura, for instance, was now applying what he learned under Tsunade. Left. Right. Above. Behind. So, if he's in none of these positions then. She focused all her chakra in one single tenkutsu and punched the ground with all her might. As a result, the entire ground exploded upon contact, thus shaking the entire ground, which almost made Naruto lose his balance as he questioned what the hell was that Sakura just did. This thought was mirrored by an entirely shocked Kakashi who appeared beneath the now destroyed field. Kakashi Sensei, I found you. The man now knew that Sakura learned the secret behind the Hokage's Taijutsu technique, and he concluded that being on the receiving end of one punch would mean his end, so better stop kidding around. Meanwhile, Sinead was appraising her skills and Drea was muttering silent words about a second Sinead. Back to the fight, Kakashi was now facing his students before Naruto summoned two cage bunching all of a sudden. Without even attacking Naruto screamed the word henge and two windmill shurikens appeared in both his hands in an instant. He threw the first one at Kakashi who dodged it easily to the right, before the blonde threw the other one forcing him to jump, but he managed to dodge them all. However, much to his surprise, Naruto was already in front of him with a roundhouse kick just seconds away of hitting Kakashi's head. While being impressed by the blonde's speed, Kakashi managed to defend the powerful kick with his arms, before a kunai suddenly appeared on his hand with the intent of hurting the blonde. It was stopped however as Naruto managed to hold Kakashi's wrist as they descended to the ground, where Sakura was waiting to deliver the punch. Meanwhile, Kakashi was wondering if the girl would deliver the punch with Naruto nearby, when he realized the blonde substituted himself with a log nearby, leaving him alone to receive the punch. It was luck that a tree branch appeared allowing Kakashi to flip and land a safe distance away from them, before he hid behind a tree while watching the splendid team work this too were displaying right now. Suddenly however, a very familiar sound of chakra being summoned into the palm of Naruto's hand. Kakashi got away just in time before Naruto slammed a much bigger racing gan at the tree, shredding it instantly. At the stands, both Tsunade and Shizun was gawking like a fish at the fight occurred. Certainly, Naruto and Sakura already knew each other and managed to fight together accordingly, but this was unheard of. Plus the fact that Naruto managed to do a racing gan without the clone's assistance showed much of his training and skills. After evading the deadly attack, Kakashi looked at his students while panting a bit. Surely, keeping on Taijutsu wouldn't be a good option for the man, seeing as these two worked well together. Where one would attack, the other would remain as backup and vice versa, he didn't have a time off with them so maybe a new approach was preferable. Lesson 1, Taijutsu completed, now is time for Lesson 2, Ninjutsu. Instantly, Kakashi started doing a huge sequence of hand seals with an impressive speed, before he inhaled air into his lungs. Katan Gaokakir no Jutsu Fire Release, Grand Fireball Jutsu. He then exhaled the technique straight at the two before he saw that Sakura was about to flee, but stood her ground as the technique approached. Apparently, Naruto said something and she chose to remain. But Naruto couldn't know about. Sutan Sujinheki Water Release, Water Barrier Jutsu. As the fireball approached a torrent of water appeared in front of them protecting Naruto and Sakura from the incoming attack before Kakashi stopped the attack giving the much-awaited signal for Naruto for another technique of his own creation. Sutan Suari Akiba Water Release, Water Dragon Fang Jutsu. The same torrent of water used for the barrier technique was suddenly transformed into an enormous water dragon as it charged at Kakashi. The technique frightened the Jounin for a while, before he saw that the dragon was passing a great distance above him, making him smile at the attempt of his student to control such a strong technique. He was under the impression that Naruto did the Suari Uden no Jutsi, but this technique was different. His sharing gan alerted him of it, as he witnessed the dragon's claw just seconds away from decapitating him, forcing Kakashi to evade to the left. However, the attack managed to hit Kakashi's arm slightly cutting the man's right sleeve entirely. He focused his sharing gan on Naruto's smile, before he realized that this was his trick the entire time. Up on the stands Drea and Yurgao were talking about this new technique and praising Naruto for its usage, while Sinead and Shizun were trying to see if this was a genjutsu or something. The Naruto they know wouldn't be able to do Sutan Jutsus. Looking at the perverted smirking, she knew the man kept the information until Naruto showed it himself. Back to the fight. 
Kakashi was now dodging another barrage of attacks by Naruto and Sakura, while feeling his stamina leaving him with each evading movement. It was time to bring out the big guns now, since Naruto showed his. Landing a kick on Sakura's chin, Kakashi backflipped as Naruto managed to grab her falling body from hitting on the ground, before he made some hand seals. Reitan Denkau no Akami, Lightning Release, Lightning Wolf Jutsu. Seeing the incoming attack, Naruto grabbed Sakura with his arms before jumping away in time to avoid the fast approaching wolf however his feet weren't as fortunate, which sent thousands of bolts to Naruto's system instantly, earning some screams in agony from the blonde. But other than that, he was fine. Lucky he was that he had a major wind affinity the likes of which no one knew. Sakura when I say so you'll move and collect the bells from him, okay. The woman obeyed instantly. Naruto was different hell she didn't even know half the techniques Naruto and Kakashi used and his moves so far spoke highly of his skills. He then, got up and Kakashi immediately narrowed his sharing Ganai at Naruto's next move. Suddenly, a vast series of hand seals were being made and Kakashi waited for the eye to tell what would come to him however the strange thing was that Kakashi just couldn't read Naruto's thoughts. By applying a closer look, Kakashi saw with shock that Naruto wasn't looking at him, but rather his feet not allowing the Sharingan to know what would come. Fuden de top of wind release, great breakthrough jutsu. The man was caught by surprise when his eyes saw a sudden ferocious gust of wind towards him, but it was too late to focus chakra on the ground, as Kakashi was sent flying uncontrollably towards the incoming set of trees. It was worse to Kakashi, because he had a lighting affinity, so wind attacks were his major weakness. A sudden bell noise alerted him, but when he sought to look at the bell strapped on his waist, he saw with shock that it wasn't there anymore. Closing his eyes as in waiting for the impact, he was surprised upon seeing that Drea was there waiting for him with a rather big toad who caught him, and placed him gently on the ground. When looking up, he saw Drea with a smirk. I forgot to tell you not to underestimate Naruto, Kakashi. In the end, he gave you quite a fight didn't he? Kakashi was slowly getting up as he saw Naruto and Sakura each carrying a bell while talking to one another. Indeed, Yorga's words made more sense now, the blonde in front of him wasn't the same one he knew. Or at least he thought he knew. Afterwards, Sinead arrived in the middle of the clearing just as Kakashi arrived at the scene. So Kakashi, how is your opinion about their skills as a team? Asked Sinead, though her answer was already certain. Kakashi closed his Sharingan and looked at his team with a smile on his face. Both Naruto and Sakura have what it takes to be form a team and both have Shoyunin level skills with Naruto being Jounin in terms of ninjutsu. I'm sure they'll fit your criteria perfectly. Tanade and Shizun smiled before she turned to Naruto and Sakura. So from now on you two and Kakashi will form team Kakashi and will be grouped on missions and Naruto. Said the Hokage calling the blonde's attention. As of right now, you're awarded with the position of Shoyunin of Kanahagakur. Now pay attention, because generally in order for a genin to be promoted, he or she must attend the exams, but are occasions when the Hokage together with the responsible Jounin can promote the genin once he show enough skills to give him the Shoyunin position, and since Kakashi consider you as such, it's my privilege to grant you the position. The blonde was indeed shocked, but he had a feeling the woman wasn't quite done yet. Now, a shoyunin is a position of privilege within our ranks and as such, it will be required of you to protect Konoha on the front lines. Also, a shoyunin is to act as captain, so you'll also be drafted to lead a genin mission outside the village from time to time. I can see that your skills skyrocketed under Drea's guidance, and I believe you earned this position. Now, I would give you the shoyunin flak jacket, but I see that you already have one so you can keep it. No problem any questions? Nope. No questions whatsoever. Just the shocked face was evident in his face. Chapter 10, A Friend's Call for Help After Naruto and Sakura's test against Kakashi, everyone went to their respective homes, but not Drea and Sinead as the latter invited her teammate for some sake in order to talk about the village's newest shoyun and shinobi. Sinead was dumbstruck the entire fight, and she wanted answers, answers that only he could supply. Well your gal could as well, but the godame wasn't in the mood to ask one of her subordinate Anbu for a bottle of sake. Or two for that manner. So now, both she and the Gama Sanin were pouring cup after cup down their throats, before Sinead smashed the sake bottle on the table and looked straight at Drea who by the way was showing maybe, 
the biggest grin possible as he knew that Naruto impressed her in more ways than anyone thought possible. I take it you want answers about the brat skills. The look of sarcasm on her face was enough to satisfy his answer as he smiled and poured one more cup of sake, before smiling at the blonde. Drea never thought he would enjoy this so much the look on her face, daring him to speak or else she would take action was too much to his drunken state, but he knew not to push her buttons any longer, since Tsunade had quite a short temper and could land quite a punch at his jaw. What did you expect Tsunade? Three years ago, I told you that he had potential to be great. You saw the results yourself, didn't you? Yeah I did, but his growth is unheard of damn it. In three years, he managed to correct every flaw he had regarding Taijutsu and weapon accuracy. He learned and mastered two elements and I happen to know from his file that he's attuned to the wind element, not both wind and water. He learned a new element from scratch. Don't tell me you don't think this surprising even Minato took longer to learn the lightning element, and he was considered the strongest shinobi in existence. Come on Drea spill it. Tsunade was getting irritated at each passing second with Drea's nothing but vague answers. The man for his part felt the urge to tell about Naruto's other skills, but then, he would actually fear for his life. The Godame was already impressed with what she saw of Naruto's skills, there wasn't any need to further fill her agony right now in understanding all this, especially when her mind was already emerged in alcohol thus devoid of any rational judgment. Okay, Sinead calm down for a second and I'll explain. Time is a hard reality for Shinobi Yu and I both know that. It takes a long period of one's dedication and compromise in order to learn a certain skill, yet alone master one. However, because of the blonde's abundance of chakra time, doesn't apply to him the same way as it does for us. You would do well to remember the usage of the cage Bunshin no Jutsu, his signature move by this, Sinead was already drawing to the needed conclusions, but Jirei continued the explanation. Cage Bunshin was mostly used for reconnaissance simply because whatever memory the clone gathers, it's immediately transferred to the original, upon being dispelled. Now, with Naruto's chakra capacity, he isn't limited to 4, 5, or 6 clones. He can summon 200 of them, and still possess the chakra to train his techniques. Now, with one reel and one clone, you do a task half the time needed, imagine the same principle with a hundred clones. The blonde trained in three years the equivalent of ten years easily. The woman had the decency to be shocked at the number of clones Naruto manages to create and still possess enough chakra to train on his own. However, this ability was unheard of in Sinead's opinion. If such ability was real, then there wasn't anything Naruto couldn't learn with the help of his clones. Looking at her teammates' eyes, she was getting suspicious true Naruto did accomplish a lot already Taijutsu elemental ninjutsu weapon accuracy. But what if the blonde had more up his sleeve? Surely, the Shoyunin could have used his skills with clones to learn a totally different new art looking at him with a smug look on her face, Sinead questioned the man while holding the sake bottle on her left hand. Okay Drea, I'm convinced of the blonde's growth, but we're talking about the skills that he showed throughout the fight against Kakashi. What of the rest, Drea? Certainly, with the cage bunch and style of training, Naruto could certainly learn other valuable skills that would better mold his skills as a shinobi. The pervert had to smile at his teammate's deduction, not enough for him to tell about Naruto's skills in dispelling mid to high level genjutsu as well as in wielding the bow staff. Surely, he would show everything he has learned at the fight against Kakashi Tsunade. You can't fight someone of Kakashi's caliber and even still manage to hide his skills. We focused mainly on those two elements and his Taijutsu. We sparred every day until we returned, and your Gao helped as well. She managed to correct one flaw with his stance as well as helped him with Sutan manipulation. She was greatly beneficial to his training you know. Drea knew what he was doing by adding your Gao to the conversation. By adding her name, Sinead forgot entirely about Naruto's hidden skills, and thought about a relationship between an Anbu captain and a Shoyunin. The Hokage, for her part, frowned at the pervert's sudden change in discussion, but didn't create a fuss over it. She was just as interested in the blonde's romantic relationship as she was regarding the blonde's shinobi abilities. Speaking about your Gao, what? Or rather how did it happen? I mean, before she would go on suicidal mission after another in hopes that some lucky kunai would slice her jugular Tsunade said. I still don't know Tsunade. Ever since she started traveling with us, 
Chi and Naruto quickly formed a bond of friendship. Every day both of them shared a lot of stories together, until one day, I wake up to see they both hugging each other. Afterwards, feelings started to bloom for one another. One thing that both the Gaki and Yurgao have in common is that they could keep a secret better than anyone I've seen, and that's saying a lot, considering my spying network. There was one night they went out in Water Country's capital that I still want to hear about. The damn brat just won't tell a thing, damn it. Drea's mumbling managed to get a rise out of Zenaid as she, then, poured some sake down her throat. Serves you right, pervert, stop messing in other people's lives. Now, that's enough drink for me, I'm afraid. I'm going home to have some sleep before Shizun comes barging and lecturing me to stop drinking. Once Drea paid for the huge tip, both Sanin went on different ways with Drea knowing that Zenaid was safe, considering that Andu was following her every step, preventing the almighty Godame Hokage from making silly mistakes that could endanger her image regarding both the village as well as others throughout the elemental nations. Equals 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 next day equals equals equals. The next day at his office Zenaid was reading the mission requests while rubbing her temples in hopes of reducing the painful hangover she was feeling right now. It was even worse since on top of the alcohol still lingering inside her blood vessels, she still had to hear her assistant's nagging voice, lecturing her to stop drinking, especially because of her status as Godame Hokage. Looking at a B-ranked mission request, Sinead was still rubbing her temples, as she realized what the mission entailed. Clearing her mind of her pain, Sinead smiled finding the right time to test the newly formed team. Shizun. Shizun, call the shinobi written in this mission request for me ASAP will you? The black-haired woman frowned at the lack of control in the Hokage's voice, but took the mission scroll, before looking at the people designated for the mission. With a smile on her face, she assigned one Anbu to get the Jounin that will be responsible for the assignment as well as his team. Equals 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 at Naruto's house equals equals equals. Naruto was having a peaceful slumber as the clock near his bed showed it was already 7 o'clock in the morning. Usually, Naruto would have to meet his team at only 10 or 12 if Kakashi's tardiness wasn't yet cured. Suddenly, a knock was heard at the door, jerking him out of bed instantly while mumbling some curse words at the damn morning lover who would think of waking him at 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay, now the blonde was pissed as he marched towards the door with very intent on knocking some sense into this person's mind, except if your gal were to make a surprise visit, then the blonde wouldn't be mad. Opening the door in a normal manner, Naruto was half expecting to see Yurgao, only to see a silver-haired Jounin waving his hands in a greeting manner. Morning Naruto. It took a while for the scene to be registered in Naruto's mind. He knew the clock wasn't broken. It was 7 o'clock in the morning right now, the sun was just now getting up, and the birds were beginning their morning songs of joy. With all this adding up, it was impossible for someone like this guy to show up this time of the hour. Kakashi, for instance, was looking at the blonde's questioned looks with a frown on his face as his students had so little expectation from their sensei. It made matters worse when Naruto moved his hands to dispel a supposed genjutsu before Kakashi had to intervene and prove that it was real. It's not a genjutsu, Naruto. We have a mission, get dressed. I'll be right here. Sorry. If I was a little shocked Kakashi sensei, I'll be ready in a few minutes Naruto said. Equals 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 at the Hokage's office equals equals equals. Half an hour later, Team Kakashi was joined in front of Sinead and Shizun as the Hokage addressed the mission that they were about to undertake. Team Kakashi, we've received call from a city 10 miles northeast from here, near the fire country's capital city. The fire daimyo would normally send his samurai to investigate but he passed the mission to us instead. It's a B-ranked mission consisting of releasing the village from a group of missing nins from a Migakure that are terrorizing over there. Proceed with utmost caution from what I understand from the mission request. Their group is quite extensive, probably two to one. Oh, and they managed to capture the village mayor's 10-year-old daughter. You three are to leave immediately any questions. The shoyunin on the team nodded their heads in the negative as Kakashi was reading the mission scroll with a relaxed and a somewhat bored visage on his face, before he faced the Godame Hokage. Any known skills we should be aware of? Kakashi asked. We're talking about civilians here Kakashi, 
they wouldn't be able to give us a thorough report on what ninja techniques they're using. We're lucky to at least know their numbers. Team Kakashi is to leave right now. Suddenly two amounts of leaves and a small tornado appeared in Team Kakashi's place, before they vanished by Shunshin towards the mission at hand leaving Shizun and Sinead alone as the Hokage turned to the next mission assignment. The Hokage was without a care in the world as she assigned a Genin team to handle a C-rank document delivery mission before Shizun decided to interrupt. She was worried for the mission that Team Kakashi was about to undertake. Tanate Sama, wouldn't it be better to send another team with Team Kakashi? The missing nins are quite a few for a three-man cell. Shizun asked, before hearing Sinead's warm laughter. Do not worry Shizun, Kakashi is one of this village's elite Jounin and Sakura was tutored by both of us, she'll be fine. Last, but not least, there is Naruto. The pervert confided me some information about his training, and I can say for sure is that no one deals against groups of shinobi enemies better than him. You saw him yesterday, didn't you? That brat surprises me every day, and this mission will be a piece of cake for them. Now, call me Ebisi's team, I have an errand for them to run. After Shizun left the office, Sinead was remembering what the pervert said to her before they left the bar last night. Equals 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 with Team Kakashi equals equals equals. After leaving the administration building, Team Kakashi were jumping through rooftops towards the east gate. According to the scroll time was of the essence in this manner, the entire village was being bullied by the missing nins and they even have the mayor tied down because of her daughter being kidnapped. Both Naruto and Sakura were aware of the sensitive situation they were in as the last few buildings passed by them before handling the documents to the Shoyunin on duty at the gate. It wasn't long until they went back to the sky, but instead of rooftops, Team Kakashi now was traveling through the heavy forest that surrounded the village. The temperature was staggering, but with the speed they were traveling, the wind gathered was more than enough to cool their skin enough to withstand the heat. Not that it mattered though, as they were born in fire country, and this hot temperature is common this time of the year. One person, in particular, was enjoying in comfort silence, the great many sights that surround the hidden village in the leaves. The almost quiet, but smooth sound of a river that crossed the forest, as well as the glistering image of the sun being reflected on the water, the animals minding their own business as all of them decided to refresh their bodies, because of the extremely hot temperature. Their travel would last another 20 minutes so Naruto had enough time to administer the sight that he could lay his eyes on. Meanwhile Sakura and Kakashi were paying close attention to both the path ahead and the blonde on their left flank. The day before Naruto had still to show his face in Konoha, both Kakashi and Sakura were caught wondering about the other member of their group. How much did the blonde change? What did he see on his travel that changed him so much? These questions kept plaguing their minds constantly as they saw the blonde looking at all directions with a comfort smile on his face, like he was in peace with the world around him. It was a strange sight, whereas before you would see a guy with unlimited amount of energy jumping constantly and screaming to the heavens about his undying wish of becoming the next Hokage. Now all that energy have seemingly vanished without a trace and it was unsettling to see. Especially for Sakura of all people. The old Team 7 suffered like no other with the betrayal of their comrade Achiha Sasuke and yet, seeing Naruto like this without a care in the world kind of forced her to believe that Sasuke never existed in the first place. Kind like their time as a team never existed? Kakashi looked at Sakura's saddened face, before looking forward as their objective was getting closer by the minute. The Jounin was equally puzzled with Naruto's new behavior. New way to see things. His most important goal upon taking on a team was to teach them the value of teamwork above all other skills. Granted, Sasuke was to blame for this situation, but while he understood that Naruto changed, he now realized something ironic. He liked the old Naruto more. The silver-haired Jounin couldn't help but feel this way. Yes, back there he was brash annoying and hyperactive like no one, but his compromise with never giving up despite it all, caused Kakashi to smile at his student. Now, it's like he turned from oil to water. This new Naruto was reserved, kept things to himself, definitely skilled if what Kakashi saw the other day was any indication. He stopped his wonderings as he saw a village on the horizon with a couple houses, and a small business center. He couldn't detect any presences at all, 
but Kakashi had enough experience to be able to detect when an enemy is concealing their chakra so as not to get caught by the opponent. Signaling with his hands, the group stopped to a halt as the mission leader turned to address his subordinates. Okay, we are a few miles outside the village, so I'll be briefing you two on the mission specs, so bear with me for a second, since I won't enjoy repeating. Kakashi looked at the two, who in turn, demonstrated their utmost attention, which pleased Kakashi as he managed their full attention. According to the mission request, the enemies are up to 10 missing nins from villages we're still unaware of, so we'll be playing safe at first, gauging their strength. Also, they happen to hold the entire village as hostages for their little scheme, so it will be up to us to get rid of these missing nins. What's most important right now, is that these guys could either be narrow-minded thugs with shinobi training, or deadly killers with an A or higher status on the bingo book. If the latter happens, we have no choice other than to retreat and call for backup of another team before returning. Now, seeing as Sakura is the medic nin of the group she'll be on the supportive side in the back with genjutsu and weapons. That leaves the fight for us Naruto. Sakura was a smart girl, and she could catch things at almost the same pace as Shikamaru, and the man was considered a genius amongst the shoyunin population. Therefore, she managed to notice the look the two shared with each other. It was definitely different than before. Kakashi and Naruto was displaying trust in one another against 10 missing nins. She just prayed that these two would be alright. Fine by me, Kakashi-sensei Naruto said with excitement, which earned a nod from Kakashi. True in person, Kakashi wished Naruto didn't change much, but he didn't have one negative bad of the blonde skills at the moment, and that's saying much in his book. Okay, let's proceed with caution for now. As soon as we arrive, both of you must be ready for any kind of trap. Let's go now. As soon as the order reached their ears, the three vanished in a blur before arriving in the middle of the village's business center. The place was better described as being abandoned for God knows how many years. No presence that could be seen, no voices that could be heard nothing. Think they left the place with the villagers as hostages? Are we too late? Sakura asked, but both Naruto and Kakashi managed to sense a great number of chakra looming inside the houses. It was like the enemy was just waiting for the group to spring the trap before moving in for the kill. It was when Naruto placed his foot just past the business center that the ground started to crumble out of a sudden. The team wasn't keen of waiting to see what would happen, so each of them jumped on top of a house, just seconds before all hell broke loss. The noise was the signal, Naruto considered as they heard the sound of doors breaking under the pressure of one kick before the group attacked the Konoha team with shurikens and deadly other projectiles towards what seemed the strongest of the team namely Naruto and Kakashi. The silver-haired Jounin parried every projectile with deadly precision by using two kunais on each hand but Naruto was impaled by all of them quite to everyone but Kakashi's surprise before his body was replaced by a log as the blonde appeared by the Jounin side. Kakashi stiffened upon seeing one of the missing nins looking at him with a smile on his face. The man was tall, heavily billed with a scar crossing his forehead. The Ame Rain Hidden Village, scratched forehead protector was located around the man's neck as his black scythe was screaming bloody murder. Naruto saw the look in Kakashi's face and asked away. Do you know him Kakashi-sensei? Naruto asked, before seeing his sensei briefly nodding while never taking his eyes away from this terrible enemy. Only in the bingo book. A minus ranked missing Nin Lomaru, M's Maruishi Boulder. Actually, the one who managed to beat him was Orochimaru, even before facing hands out of the salamander and being latter, nominated as one of the Sanin. Sakura. Said Kakashi, getting the woman's attention as she listened intently. Right now, our priority is to find the mayor's daughter as well as the villagers to make sure they're all right. Me and Naruto will remain and fight this group. Out of the ten, only Lomaru represents danger, so I'll take him. Naruto, you'll be up against the rest nine. They're gen into low chunin level nothing I know you can't handle right. Only a smile was needed, before Sakura vanished within a blur to look for the little girl's location. Naruto, for his part smiled at this scenery. Fighting multiple opponents was what he trained so hard for these last three years. One of the enemies when seeing the girl vanish was about to go look for her, but was stopped by Lomaru who ordered him to take care of the blonde, much to Kakashi's surprise. 
Though Maru M's Maruishi A minus ranked missing Nin was eyeing Naruto, a tough fighter, but a Shoyunin still. Looking at the blonde, Kakashi was surprised when Naruto grabbed a blue scroll strapped with red tape before he unwrapped it and extended the scroll in midair. Immediately smoke filled their position before Kakashi's eyes widened in surprise as the imposing black bow staff now in Naruto's grasp as he fell into a battle position stance. Kakashi would be surprised by the sudden new skill, but he has other concerns at the moment. Naruto noticed the stare he was receiving from the enemies and even Kakashi's, he knew this would shock his sensei, considering that he had yet to use his bajutsu in a fight next to the silver-haired jounin. Nevertheless, his concerns landed on the nine Ame missing nins. Of course none of them looked like much, but whereas Naruto would have no trouble fighting one-on-one, -on -one, but definitely one against nine was a challenge to say the least. I'm not going to ask how or when you learned how to wield the bow staff, and I won't ask why you thought better than not telling about it to me beforehand. What I'm going to ask is for you to be careful Naruto. I'll be extremely occupied with Nomaru, and I won't be able to provide cover. Kakashi said, before seeing Naruto smile in appreciation. Don't worry Kakashi-sensei, I trained a lot these last three years on how to take on multiple enemies. I'll be fine. Kakashi nodded his hand in positive before focusing all his attention on Nomaru, who for his part was looking directly at Kakashi, as if the rest of the world wasn't suddenly important. However, the same moment he diverted his attention away from Naruto, the blonde began a huge series of hand seals in order to divide the fight, and let Kakashi alone with his opponent. Fuden de Tapa Wind Release, Great Breakthrough Jutsu The wind suddenly picked up, alerting Kakashi to the usage of chakra before he turned to Naruto. Just as he did so, Naruto exhaled a strong gust of wind that managed to send all the opponents flying away from the vicinity except Momaru who had enough experience with wind users to focus some chakra to his feet in order to stick to the ground. Nevertheless, he prided himself of being cautious, and in the end this mysterious blonde proved to be quite the opponent. Kakashi had to smile at his student, though he had more important matters to take care of. Naruto, at this time had already vanished within a small tornado probably towards the position where the others went, thus leaving the two strong opponents alone in a deserted city. I was hoping that Konoha would send someone strong to defend this pathetic excuse of a village. I'm glad they sent you, Sharingan no Kakashi. I'll be testing my skills against you, Nomari said, starting the challenge. Surely, you already battled against tougher opponents than me, Nomaru. No matter though, you won't get out of here alive, Nomaru. After accepting the challenge, Kakashi fell into a Taijutsu stance, while observing his opponent. The man was obviously built for close to mid-range fighting so Taijutsu wasn't exactly the best alternative of engagement. Plus, the fact that Naruto is facing nine enemies at the same time worried Kakashi, but he didn't have a choice but to trust the blonde. There has been 20 years since I faced that snake, Kakashi. After that, no one gave me the rush of a true fighting. You'll provide this for me. Enough talking. Let's get this over with, Kakashi said as he lifted his headband, revealing the almighty Sharingan. Equals 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 with Sakura equals equals equals. Away from the fighting, Haruo Sakura was searching for clues within the village territory in order to locate the mayor's kidnapped daughter, as well as the rest of the villagers, seeing as the missing nins captured them all. She didn't want to leave her comrades behind, but orders were orders as she happened to take great pride in being loyal. The houses were in bad condition, but as she entered in one of the houses, she was dumbstruck to see blood on the ground, pointing towards the windows as if whoever it was, was dragged away by the missing nins. Upon looking at the window, she managed to follow the path of blood through the grassy field, quite to her surprise, since a little rain would wipe this blood away instantly. She shrugged this thought away and followed the path, weary of the presumably obvious clue. Certainly, not even an academy student wouldn't be able to spot the path of blood thus Sakura was only waiting for a trap to trigger as she followed the path. Eventually, the trail of blood stopped, and Sakura looked up to see a cave a few hundred meters in front of her with one man guarding the entrance. Immediately, she rushed to hide behind a canopy tree right next to her. She waited a bit until she was certain that the man didn't spot her position before she moved through the foliage, until she was at striking distance with the guard. Taking a shuriken from her holster, she threw with utmost proficiency at a specific point in the man's neck, killing him instantly. 
The noise he made upon falling on the ground gave her the signal to appear, before she checked his vitals to assure that he was dead. As a medic nin, Sakura loathed the necessity of killing the enemy, but as both Shizun and Sane taught her, sometimes you have to kill one in order to save a thousand. Not that Sakura enjoyed hearing that, however it's in her profession's nature to kill when needed of her. Stealing her resolve, she entered the cave, before she smiled upon seeing a group of frightened people staring at her in fear. Do not fear, everyone, we're ninjas from Konoha. We're here to free you, let's go. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. After Naruto appeared at the clearing, the enemy stared at him with concentration, due to his wind attack earlier. The enemies dressed up pretty much the same. Gray flak jackets with black paints, and the usual mask every Ame Nin possesses in order to breathe below water. The only difference between each other was the facial features and their hair with some being raven and a few blondes. Before the Konoha Shoyunin could assess their strength his enemies charged with intent to kill written all over their face. Quietly grabbing the bow staff Naruto started spinning it until it formed a circle spin, while at the same time focusing Futen type chakra through his weapon's length. Just as the enemies were about to arrive and kill the blonde, his jutsu sprang to action, forming a concentrated gust of wind out of the staff that enveloped everyone. Futen Rapushao no Heid Shi, Wind Release Violent Gale Wind Jutsu. The jutsu itself didn't possess offensive purposes so Naruto's intention was to keep the entire group from attacking him together allowing him to strike each one with his bow staff. Taking advantage of the enemy's disorientation, the blonde managed to land a powerful strike at one of them on the shoulder before he heard the sound of bone cracking under pressure, followed by a huge scream of agony. As the blonde went for the second one a hail of kunais charged at him from the left forcing him to abandon his charge and fall into defensive position, deflecting the projectiles by effectively positioning his weapon. After the projectile attack, Naruto charged the ones who threw them, while swirling his staff behind his back. The two responsible for the projectile's offensive charged as well, but unlike Naruto, both of them were making hand seals, finishing it with the dragon hand seal, before gathering water chakra inside their bodies. Sutan Mizutama Water Release, Water Bullet Jutsu. Out of nowhere the two enemies shot numerous water bullets towards Naruto, who managed to dodge a few before jumping in mid-air to avoid the rest. However, as he was about to attack the two with his staff, two came from behind, and tried to attack him with spinning kicks aiming for the blonde's head. To the Ame Nin's surprise, one kick landed, but when they were about to pound Naruto further, before they realized with fear that a log was in his place. The real Naruto now seeing the four in front of him and another three closing by from his right flank, quickly summoned two cage bunshin that managed to stop the ones from behind, before doing a sequence of four quick hand seals. He approached his hand close to his mouth in order to concentrate his next attack. Fuden K's Dangan, Wind Release, Wind Shot Jutsu. The numerous wind shots charged the four missing nins in front of him with speeds unheard of, before hitting the enemies dead on. And because of Wind's abilities, the bullet landed on the enemy's legs, opening a huge hole on it. The four were taken care of to say the least. Just a little pressure to their leg was enough to pour a large quantity of blood followed by an unbearable pain. This allowed Naruto to charge at them and land powerful strikes on their shoulders, dislocating it and taking them, definitely, out of commission. The remaining four looked at the blonde with fear as he now stood in front of them with a stealing resolve. Their peers were all hit on the shoulder and were on the ground, unconscious. The ninja in front of them was on a whole other level, so they needed to use everything they have in order to beat him. Naruto was about to charge when all four of them started making hand seals, but what alarmed Naruto was the last hand seal used. Tiger. Damn Katan Jutsu, Naruto thought as he quickly made a series of hand seals of his own to parry the blow, before he sensed the usage of chakra in front of him. Katan K and How Shaky Fire Release, Flamethrower Jutsu. Much to Naruto's surprise, the four techniques managed to merge with one another, doubling the size of the flame beam. The blonde managed to finish the dragon hand seal just in time, before he managed to gather as much chakra as he could to strengthen his defense. Sutan Sujinhaki Water Release, Water Barrier Jutsu. Just as the fire attack was about to reach Naruto, the water barrier rose in front of him, stopping the fire beam attack from advancing. 
but because of the joint efforts, Naruto's jutsu proved too weak to parry and his defense wouldn't be able to hold on much longer forcing Naruto to jump up high and avoid the attack before watching in morbid fascination as the attack managed to explode a huge rock behind him. The blonde was caught by surprise when he felt the temperature rise before he turned and faced the mighty of a grand fireball technique. Being on the air prevented him from evading, so he was enveloped entirely, much to the enemy's smirk, seeing as the blonde did cause a lot of trouble for the group. However as soon as the group turned to see their master, they were head to head with Naruto crossing his arms in a bored manner. Said attitude was met with question marks followed by shouts from the Ame missing nins, since they saw the Shoyunin being enveloped by the grand fireball technique. Naruto for his part smiled at the group's inability to understand what happened up there, so he set himself to explain, seeing as he was about to end this fight anyway. That attack actually did take me by surprise. I'd say congratulations are in order. I had very short time to make cage bunching and replace positions with him. Now. Naruto said as he started a huge and fast series of hand seals, thus alerting the enemies. One didn't want for Naruto to finish the sequence, so he charged at the blonde, quite expecting the shoyunin to stop the hand seal sequence and block any eventual strike that may come after him but to the man's surprise, Naruto's resolve never faulted as he went through hand seal after hand seal, before he focused on the bird hand sign. Fuden Atsuga wind release, pressure damage jutsu. Instantly and with but a surge of both his hands, Naruto exhaled a wide camp of compressed wind towards the enemies who for their part, couldn't escape. The compressed wind was gaining power from Naruto's chakra as it sliced and shredded everything in its path, leaving nothing standing. Trees, flowers, grass, human bodies. Still, the compressed wind field took a while to stop as it leveled the entire clearing in less than a minute. Satisfied with the results of his wind training Naruto turned to where Kakashi and Womari were fighting. Surely, air pressure manipulation was the hardest theory to grasp and surely Sujiro sensei would be proud to see Naruto's performance. Equals 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 with Kakashi equals equals equals. Back at Kakashi's fight, both he and Lomara reached a stalemate at the center of the village with Kakashi holding a kunai and Lomara a broad kodashi. Just after Naruto left and only ninjutsu fight began, Kakashi with every trick in the book so far acquired by his Sharingan and Lomari surprisingly, with only Dotan ninjutsu. And while the silver-haired Jounin possessed an entire arsenal of Reitan ninjutsu, Lomari would simply dodge or evade by merging within the ground. When it was clear that they would reach a stalemate in the ninjutsu department, Lomaru attacked Kakashi with straight out Teijutsu with his Kodashi for a supporting edge. Kakashi was faster with the Sharingan, but every blow he managed to land on Lomaru was like he was kicking and punching a damn rock. The Sharingan user couldn't for his life figure out what was happening, but he couldn't let himself give up. Like him Lomaru wasn't having much luck. The Konoha Jounin was 10 times faster than he would ever be so every blow he prepared for, Kakashi would be two steps ahead of it, thus dodging effortlessly. Getting frustrated with the useless assault, Lomari used brute strength and managed to throw Kakashi out of balance long enough for him to use one last jutsu that will assure his victory. Doing a four-sequence hand seal, he then slammed his hands on the ground with enough force that managed to create a small hole. Dotan Jishin no jutsu earth release earthquake jutsu. The results were much appreciated as the ground started shaking with utmost intensity, making Kakashi lose even more balance, almost on the verge of falling on the ground. Lomaru wasn't stupid enough to waste this gold opportunity as he charged with his Kodashi with the intent of slicing the famous Sharingan no Kakashi's head off. The man knew his opponent was dry of resources of defending himself if his wide eyes were any indication. However, just before Lomaru's Kodashi landed inches away from Kakashi's jugular he heard something that made his skin crawl. Seconds later, he looked to his right to see a water dragon coming from his left side, before hitting him full force sending the missing nin flying towards the nearest tree forest where he ended up hitting his head before reaching unconsciousness. Sutan Suariudin no Jutsu Water Release, Water Dragon Jutsu. Kakashi was surprised at what happened, before he turned to see his blonde student landing next to him so as to check on his sensei. Are you okay, sensei? Naruto asked as he extended his hand to help Kakashi get up. The silver-haired Jounin took a first look at his student and saw the battle marks on his clothes and even on his skin, which meant he also had a fierce battle of his own. 
Smiling at his student for actually saving his life, Kakashi rushed to Lomaru's position and started focusing lightning chakra on his right hand for the killing move. By this time Sakura and the villagers arrived, before she greeted her teammate and sensei to report the mission well done. By this time though, Kakashi already delivered his Raikiri blow to Lomaru's heart before sealing him to be taken into Konoha's custody. The mayor, at the end, appreciated the Konoha team for saving their village to which Kakashi replied by saying that they were happy to be of help. Afterwards, Kakashi Sakura and Naruto returned at a normal pace towards their home village. The mission started as B-ranked, but with Lomaru's presence, it turned to an A-ranked mission. Sakura pouted because her job didn't require much action other than swiftly killing the guard covering the cave entrance, so she ended up asking questions about her teammate and Sensei's piece of the action. Unfortunately, both weren't very attentive to details, which actually infuriated her to no end. Naruto just faced nine enemies on his own and the only thing he told her was that he used a couple of food and jutsus managing to overcome the enemies, but Kakashi knew better. He was the one who saw the bow staff on Naruto's hand and the fact that the blonde stance was nothing less than Jounin skills. Nevertheless, he chose to stay silent in this whole manner, seeing that he would have other opportunities to question Naruto about it in the future. After a few more hours, Kanaha's impossibly penetrating wall surrounded by dense foliage. Upon arriving, there were few things Team Kakashi wanted to do, seeing as this wasn't a long-term mission or anything. They left in the morning and returned a few minutes to sundown, so besides reporting to the Hokage about the mission, there wasn't much to do. Sakura would do her hospital shift later at night, and Kakashi was about to finish the last issue of Ika Ika Tactics. Speaking of the book, Kakashi thought that this one was the best one yet. The characters Nagashi and Yujido were a part of a special organization that was responsible for maintaining the security in Fire Country's capital. One time, they went in a mission together, and immediately bonded to sexual levels that, according to Kakashi, contained the best sexual scene ever. Little did he know though, that the characters Drea based off were real, and he happened to meet both of them. Naruto, actually was the only one of the three that happened to have plans for tonight which didn't include either reading his novel alone at home, or spend the night inside some hospital. Yesterday, he didn't have time to accompany Yorgao to that sushi place she was telling so much about and tonight happens to be the time when her team gets the night off to enjoy themselves. So, Naruto only had to report to the Hokage and he was ready to go home and change his clothes to later, meet with his girlfriend. Probably, that's why he was smiling from ear to ear as the group crossed the gate, before presenting the necessary documentation to the shoyunin responsible for gatekeeping. Equals 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 at Konoha equals equals equals. After presenting the documents at the gate, Team Kakashi went straight to the Hokage's office where the report was handled, directly to Tsunade's ears. Normally, the Hokage didn't need an oral report presentation from its shinobis, but when missions regarding other villages' security within Fire Country's territory, it's the Hokage's responsibility to conjure a summary report and send it straight to the Fire Daimyu. The report indicated that neither of the three ninjas had any trouble dealing with the enemies, except from Kakashi's momentary lack of concentration which lead to Lomari almost killing the silver-haired Jounin if it weren't for Naruto's prompt response with a high-level Sutan Jutsu. Tsunade was skeptical about Naruto's part of the mission, seeing as he just faced nine missing nins without breaking a sweat. She was more than curious with the blonde's real capabilities, and she hoped that this mission would force him to show said skills to the public. But, since no one from the team was present to witness his fight, she was forced to take his word for it, much to her frustration. She knew something was wrong and both he and Drea were hiding something, but the question was why. Sure, a ninja's profession is deception and hiding their skills is the difference between killing and be killed. Nevertheless, as Hokage, she should be aware of her ninja's abilities for assignment issues. Tsunade sighed in resignation as she couldn't do anything right now, so she dismissed the team with the order of presenting tomorrow for another mission before everyone, but Sakura vanished from the office. The girl was to head towards the hospital and Shizun would accompany her there. Equals 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 with Naruto equals equals equals. With hands on pocket, Naruto was walking aimlessly throughout the streets of Konoha. Looking at the time, he supposed he had a few more hours before he had to leave home to meet with Yurgao at the sushi place. Suddenly, he spotted two familiar faces coming his direction, 
so he decided a greeting was in order. However, both friendly faces took a while to recognize the blonde, much to his snort seeing as he didn't change much. Or did he? Damn it Shikamaru, it's me Naruto, Naruto shouted at both Shikamaru and Tamurai, while the former kept looking at the blonde with a questioned gaze. Oh Naruto, I didn't recognize you there. When did you return from your trip? Tamurai for her part, looked at the blonde in front of them and wondering if this was the same blonde shrimp that wanted to take on everybody and the same one who managed to save her brother from himself. Just yesterday. My team and I already had a mission today, A- ranked. Huh, not that is any of my business and all, but why are you together? This isn't a date right? Shikamaru is too lazy for that. The pineapple-headed Shoyunin snorted at the commentary, but Temurai bit him to it with the explanation. A date? No, hell no. Once again, Shikamaru snorted at how much troublesome blondes he knows before she continued. Since the agreement with Suna and Konoha was signed, I was nominated ambassador from my village. Also, both villages assigned me and this lazy ass over here to organize the Shoyunin exams. What reminds me, Naruto, said Shikamaru, calling the blonde's attention. Aren't you going to compete this time, if I remember correctly, you're the only one from our age that is still a genin. Even Neji is now a jounin. I was. But the Hokage decided to test my skills against Kakashi Sensei, and if I passed, then she would promote me. Me and Sakura managed to defeat him, so Hokage Sama promoted me last night, Naruto said, earning a nod from Shikamari before the blonde turned to Temurai. Say, Temurai, how is Gara? I imagine him to be at least a Jounin as well if his skills, three years ago, was any indication. Actually, Naruto. Gara was promoted to Shoyunin on that exam three years ago, and just last year, he was nominated the Godame Keisuke. He and Sinead Sama has been making plans for a while and the village relations improved tenfold. That information shocked Naruto, but in a positive sense. He confessed that he wasn't exactly friends with Gara, but seeing as they share a common feat, Naruto considered him close to family. Shikamaru and Tamurai considered how Naruto always wanted to become Hokage and maybe he was taking this information badly, but it all faded when the blonde smiled. Well, good for him. It's good to see one of us getting the recognition he deserves. Now guys, I have to go home so I'll see you later, see ya. The blonde didn't want for a reply as he continued on his path towards his house, while thinking about how Gara was now the Godame Keisuke and how much stronger he must have gotten now. Shikamaru and Tamurai though, kept looking at his back with a frown, because both spotted several differences between the old, and the new Naruto. The lazy though, shrugged his shoulders and began walking towards wherever he was going before Tamurai followed him as well, muttering about lazy ass shinobi and the lack of motivation. Equals 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 at Naruto's house equals equals equals. Once arriving at his building, the blonde proceeded to climb the stairs towards his apartment for some relaxing, before he had to take a shower. The thoughts on the next Keisuke now vanished from his mind, and he was just wondering what he would do for relaxing. Throughout his training trip, he enjoyed reading ninjutsu material. It calmed him down, somewhat, even if he was indirectly training. Upon arriving on his floor, he looked up to see his sensei seating close to ledge while reading the book Aero Sensei wrote. Naruto somehow knew what Kakashi wanted with him although he actually preferred that his sensei would focus on reading that book of his and leave him alone tonight. The sun was almost vanishing by now, and the moonlight was already illuminating the village with all its majesty. Nevertheless, instead of enjoying the sight, Naruto was soon to be trapped in an interrogation about his skills with Bajutsu. I suppose you want answers, Kakashi sensei? The sensei managed to show a smile despite his blue mask before returning to his stoic demeanor as he closed his book and got off from the ledge. Staring in front of Naruto, he placed his hands inside his pockets and gazed the blonde's demeanor. He was slightly surprised to see boredom written on his face, but he pressed the subject. As your sensei, Naruto, it's my obligation to know about my students' abilities. Normally, I would take you for a beginner at the art of Bajutsu, since clearly you never touched the weapon until you left with Dreyasama. However, that stance alone showed Jounin level skills. The only question that I'll ask is why. Why hide it from us, your peers? Naruto only smiled though, as he explained to his sensei. 
He was already thinking of something he could use to turn the table around. But he will only use it in the end. We shinobi take pride from deception, Kakashi Sensei. By showing everything I can do in one fight, the enemy will use the information against me and act accordingly. Plus, I already showed enough skills for you to work on, Sensei Teijutsu, Wind and Water Ninjutsu Weapon Accuracy. The rest is for me to depend on in case the enemy knows about it. I understand your reasons regarding your enemies, Naruto, but I have yet to hear about why you felt it was better hiding it from both me and Sakura. I know you changed a lot during your training and yes, you have good teamwork skills, but learn how to trust others, it's a vital skill to possess. Kakashi felt like he was lecturing the blonde, but little did he know that Naruto actually wanted him to go down that road for him to explore what Kakashi said and turn it against him. What about you Kakashi sensei? Naruto asked, surprising the sensei, at the level of defiance never seen before. You have the world's most powerful dojutsu the Sharingan, you are known throughout the elemental nations as the man who managed to copy more than a thousand techniques and yet, you use no more than five or ten jutsus with us around, you manage to parry Zandatu with nothing but a kunai. Nobody I know keeps as much secrets as you do and yet here you are lecturing me about trusting my teammates. You have to agree with me about the oddity behind this situation. Kakashi's single eye widening in surprise was enough proof to the blonde that his sensei didn't expect any sort of such retaliation coming from Naruto. Nevertheless, the slap was delivered and Kakashi suddenly didn't feel so good. Naruto's tone remained neutral, though his words echoed inside his brain. The blonde for his part saw the sudden change in behavior and questioned whether or not he hit a tight spot and ended up meddling in his sensei's personal life. However, why Kakashi wants the blonde to trust others if he does the same thing? Sensei, Naruto said, calling the man's attention. You don't have to worry about me hiding my skills from my friends. Like yours my hidden skills may allows me to save them and that's what I aim most of all. If I said anything that hurt you, I'm sorry, it was never my intention. Everyone has secrets, and it's up for each one to trust someone into sharing, you can't just force that trust. Now, I'm sorry sensei, but I'm late. I have to meet someone in an hour, so I'll see you tomorrow okay? Yeah Naruto, see you tomorrow. Kakashi didn't wait for Naruto to reply, before he vanished within a swirl of leaves in order to pay a visit to his fallen comrades. The blonde's words hurt deeply, but the problem was that everything Naruto was said was nothing further from the truth. How could he expect his students to trust him if he didn't trust them with his life and skills? Kakashi knew about their students' lives, but his students didn't know a thing about how it was for Hitake Kakashi to grow up during wartime under the reign of the Yondime Hokage. Without anything left to do for the day, Kakashi just stared at the stone that contained the name of those that he considered family throughout his life. Rin. Uchiha Abito. Namikaze Minato. With Kakashi, these three were a part of the same team and together they were. Dada Rek. Just like Team 7, he was like Sasuke, a stuck-up genius who considered the shinobi's rules of conduct the manual of his life next to Chiha Abito, the clown of the team like Naruto, well like Naruto was three years ago. A proud knucklehead with a heart of gold and last but not least Rin who like Sakura did nothing but fawn for Kakashi like Sakura did for Sasuke three years ago. While back then his team lacked teamwork, his sensei Namikaze Minato the Yondime Hokage managed to correct their flaws. When the silver-haired Yonin picked up a team he considered that teamwork would be the answer to everything. But today only served to prove that he actually didn't believe in said word. Smiling in realization, Kakashi found that he was looking directly at his sensei's name, as if he was staring face to face with the Yondime Hokage crossing his arms, and showing that warm smile on his face. Kakashi offered silent words in approval of Minato's son, and how much alike Naruto was from the Yondime. I wonder if he will surpass the Yondime, thought Kakashi as he gave his back to the memorial stone, before going home to rest. Equals 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 next day equals equals equals. The next day, Naruto rubbed his eyes in order to cover the first rays of sunlight that managed to invade his room. Throughout his trip, the blonde got used to waking up with the sunlight so he never bothered closing the drapes of his window. Looking to his right, Naruto smiled as your gas prone figure slept peacefully with a smile on her face. Instantly, memories flooded his brain as he remembered what happened yesterday on their date. 
They went to the sushi restaurant your gas favorite where they enjoyed themselves as a couple while eating some sushi and drinking some sake. Even though both chose to remain their relationship a secret the restaurant was far away from the village's commercial district so hardly anyone would eat there, save for your gao and a few civilians. Naruto explained about his team's mission as well as Kakashi's curiosity of his skills with the bow staff, even up to the point of saying that Naruto should trust his peers with this information. He remembered your gao snorting at her senpai for doing something like this, before she grinned when Naruto explained how he turned the tables on Kakashi. The night was a blast so far, and it was even better when Naruto took your gao for a walk throughout the village's outskirts, before the couple went to Naruto's apartment to end the night with style. Said style was the reason why Naruto's face was red like a tomato after what he and your gao did yesterday. Looking at the clock, he saw that he had one hour and a half to present at the Hokage for another mission with his team. Not wanting to wake your gao up, he stripped his boxers and took a quick shower. By the time he walked out of the bathroom, he saw that your gao was already up and in the kitchen fixing some breakfast for them. Morning your gao chan. Had a nice sleep? The woman smiled at Naruto's presence, before nodding at his question, even though she heard Naruto's neighbor shouting to the heavens that he was the epitome of youthfulness, and silently wondered how Naruto could stand it. Yeah, although that guy woke me up an hour ago with that blatant scream of his. How can you stand it every day is beyond me. Your gao said before the blonde smirked. That's nothing you should hear when Lee shows up as well. Imagine a duet of the epitome of youthfulness reverberating on your walls at 5 in the morning. Your gao flinched before serving breakfast at the table. Surely, one was loud enough and she didn't want to hear two of them screaming at such an early hour. Breakfast was eaten quietly as they simply enjoyed each other company. Half an hour later, the couple was now fully dressed for battle, Yogao with her Anbu attire and Naruto with his. Once leaving the apartment, each went to different directions as Naruto headed for the Hokage's office and Yogao for the Anbu HQ. Equals 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 at the Hokage's tower equals equals equals. On top of the Hokage's tower was located the many hawks that were responsible for the communication between villages. Inside the room were two shoyunin seated near a table with cards on their hands as this happens to be quite a tedious job to have. Suddenly though, a special hawk from Suna landed and that meant something important to the shoyunin, since one of them lifted from the chair out of a sudden, dropping it on the ground as he saw the message. The special breed of hawk, they knew were chosen for urgent message, so when one of them appeared, Konoha needed to know right away. Reading the message the man gasped at the importance before he ran towards the Hokage's office before barging in as expected when carrying important information. Inside he saw a team of shinobi and the famous Hitake Kakashi listening to a mission debriefing by the Hokage. However, seeing the necessity to interrupt, the shoyunin did so without fear of repercussions. Hokage-sama, an important message from Suno arrived. The Keisuke was kidnapped by the Akatsuki and they request immediate assistance. The news shocked everyone including Sinead for a while, before Hokage mode entered once more. Tatsuki search for Sabaku no Temurai in the village and call for her right now, she's probably with Nara Shikamaru right now. Team 7 will be given a new mission, S ranked. You are to go to Sunigakure immediately and assist them in Gera's retrieval. The order was complied right away by the team as the Shoyunin left in order to alert Temurai. Meanwhile, Naruto was shocked. Gara being captured, but how? How strong can the Akatsuki be? That's it for this part if you enjoyed it then like, share and subscribe for the next video as it's going to be more interesting, and also check out my other playlist hope you would like them too.